Hello, welcome back to Hush Hush. I made a poll yesterday on Twitter and both YouTube, and the consensus, uh, no, <laughs> I should probably say what the poll was first. Um, the poll was saying, hey, would you like me to just finish off Hush Hush? Like, the next few videos are just going to be Hush Hush. Um, and the consensus was yes. So, for the next few videos, it's going to be Hush Hush, which means I gotta get to recording this game. I recorded part three last night. And here we are now recording part four. So here we go. Also, I'm eating right now, so, yeah. If you hear me chewing, it's just me, sorry. What have we got on the schedule for today? Oh, just in the evening, okay. Let's go to the cafe. Let's meet up with Lotus. So I told the doctor that I wasn't sure but usually it's not nearly so flexible. If you're talking about this with your sister, I'm gonna kill you. Dimitri, enough! We have a customer, and not a moment too soon! Yeah, man, what the fuck? Hola, aloha, and hello! Hola, Welcome aloha, to the Queen and hello. Queen Coffee House. What can I get for you today? Just a large coffee, please. Here you are. I got six have grand. A Thank you. This bitch again. Sir Vix. As you enter the enchanted garden, Sir Vix immediately falls from a tree, brushes up himself up, and smiles at you. The hero returns once more, seeking knowledge and sucker. Personally, I'm not sure what sucker means, but it sounds like a fun time. They're calling you a sucker. Before we check to see how your quest fares, I shall read from the blog of their holy socks, as is tradition. The blog? <clears throat> According to Sect 3, 1415, if two knights cannot maintain erection for the purpose of mutual pleasure, uh, they should part as friends. For there are no hard feelings. Bad pun. One, two. Why the fuck is this the sect number the first five digits of pi? 3.1415. What, what, what was the point of referencing that? All right then. Let's see how much hentai you've collected, yeah, and much hentai how I've much collected. more may be hidden throughout the kingdom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Excellent! It appears that you've collected around 30% of the hentai in Sabrosa. Oh, that's astounding! And we're on episode 4, that bodes well. 30% is a fine achievement, but there is still a long, hard journey ahead of you. Long. And hard. One of those terms doesn't define you. So, best of luck! May we meet again! Let's just go to the park. Who's here again? Isn't it Ella? L, not Ella, excuse me. You're over the park and it's relatively busy. People are throwing frisbees, having picnics, or while just enjoying the warm weather. Walking over to the fountain, you see Elle sitting by herself on a bench with a small flock of birds already flitting about close to her feet. You make your way over to her, cautious to not disturb birds. You will hear Elle speaking to her feathered crowd and pause before interrupting her. <laughs> I'm so happy you like the bird seed I brought. But please do share. I see a few of you back there too nervous to get closer. Oh. I made sure not to get the kind with red millet this time. I didn't realize it was so unpopular. None of you even ate a morsel. I do the same thing with coleslaw. I'm not sure if it's the word slaw or the fact that it tastes like sad cabbages. Sad cabbages. But I have never cared for it. Yeah, coleslaw isn't that good. Here you are. Another handful. I'm not burning myself, but I'd love to get closer to it. Oh, and if I sit here? Oh, hello! It's good to see you. Yeah. Elle greets, stands to greet you. Jesus Christ. And manages a small courtesy before gesturing to the bench to snack. To I'm next so her. happy you showed up. I love the company. Mm hmm. How wonderful that you can make it. I know feeding the birds is quite literally for the birds, but I enjoy it. The only problem is that the birds aren't quite the conversationalists you might imagine. I informed them uh. of all the latest news I've heard, but they rarely reciprocate. I don't think they have enough neurons to know what news means. I suppose you could say they're a little... bird-brained. <laughs> you bird puns in ten seconds sounds like foul language to me. <laughs> well, I have a lot of time to think them up. So, don't be jealous. That's fantastic. Here, take a handful. Try not to rain it down right on their heads. They get grouchy, and I can't say I blame them. Yeah, throwing fruit at someone's head, that is not pleasant. 
So how is your vacation going? Are you enjoying your time in Subrosa so far? Mostly, but I could definitely use any tips of how you might have as a local. I'm afraid I don't really have many tips to share. Otherwise, you'd be the first person I would tell. Let's go. Between Bonnabelle's Bakery, the cafe, and the park, you visited my three favorite places. Oh, damn. Though, I hear the restaurant at the winery is a lovely place to bring a date. Sorry, I was eating. Let's go! But I can't say I'm speaking from experience there. <laughs> I'll gently toss another handful of seeds. Somehow you can't help but notice how delicate and careful she is. The words really do get much closer to her than anyone else. The stellar J Jay gives you the evil eye when you offer him sunflower seed, but gladly hops to Elf's feet when she dishes them out. Sorry, I'm chewing. She seems so wishful. Bah. Watching them that for a moment. Watching them that for a moment. You wonder if perhaps she's falling asleep. Can I ask you a weird question? Sure. Actually, never mind. It's silly. You gonna ask me anything else? Yes. I suppose I could. I feel like you would take any question I ask seriously. And yeah. that's a nice feeling. Okay. You're right. Damn, it's kind of sad. Have you ever imagined what it would be like to be a bird? Oh. And I don't mean just flying. Or eating worms, in case you get hung up on that. Okay. I mean, being so free, oh. you couldn't even understand the alternative. To be able to dart away and fly to safety. To wake up not sure where you might go or what you might eat. To be at the mercy of storms and snow and everything that might find you a tasty meal. But never worrying, never regretting, just being a bird. Do you ever wonder if that would be better? Or if that would be a sort of loss of yourself? In case that was too weird, pretend I asked you about wool. Blankets. <laughs> that wasn't a weird question, that was a real one. Quite the overlap with me more blankets and birds, actually, politically speaking. If you don't wonder what it's like being something else, you might not see what you are. Uh, yes. Let's That's go. Right. That's a big thought. Too big for a bench. Too big for now. <laughs> Too big. The chickadees are my favorite, by the way. Just in case you were wondering. Okay. You now spend the better part of an hour tossing bird seed to the grateful bird. Afterwards, Al pulls the empty plastic bag of seed and puts it delicately in her purse. Thank you for spending this time with me. I enjoyed it very much. The birds might appreciate Trust it. Trust me, they very much do. I can tell. You're a bird whisperer. Time for me to go. But I hope we can do this again. Yeah, sure. Al gets a slightly awkward look of expectation. She steps closer to you, but it's obvious she's unsure if just how to say goodbye. Um, okay, this is a bit extreme. Alright, fuck it. Can you give her a kiss? And this time Al turns her cheek and really throws you a quick attack and the moment is over. Fuck! Good day. <laughs> See you again. I was, I was outgoing and it got me fucked. Not literally. Those steps are the best I've ever seen, Carl. Oh shit. Do I have anything going on right now? It's like 10th afternoon. No, I have something in the evening. Town or the cafe? Let's go back to town. Let's see what's going on there. Strolling through town looking for something to do, you find yourself a little bored and distracted. Your eyes pass over store windows filled with tacky tourists, kitsch, tacky tourist kitsch, frogs made of seashells glued together, angels carved from willow but actually plastic. Just when you think your trip is a bust, you spot a scratch and wind ticket on the bench that hasn't been scratched. What luck? What do you do? Claim the prize, bust scratch, and like, just scratch the fucking ticket. You scratch the ticket and win five bucks. Let's go! You're dug in the market and claim your prize pocket in the crisp bill. You continue on your day. Okay, let's go to the... Let's go home. Talk to Quill. And we having, like, a, like a tea party with someone? Wasn't that what it was? We're at home. That evening completely wiped out. It is until you reach the front door and you recall Quill mentioning something about plans tonight. You crack the front door open, waving to see if a herd of gerbils or something rushes out. Instead, only a strange, pleasant smell greets you. As you enter the house, the smell of lemon and cinnamon hits you like a scented candle shoved up your nose. You peek into the kitchen and see Quill standing there holding a cup of tea. Various cups of, and dishware are set out 
Bling and teapot, there are also several stuffed animals in the sock puppet. <laughs> cool, so eyes light up when she sees you. She sips delicately at you as though pretending to have just noticed you and oh, smiles. Hello, I didn't hear you come in. Nice day, isn't it? Nice day for a tea party? Yeah. I wanted to make you something really special to thank you for being so nice to me. So I made you a tea cozy out of an old tea cozy. But then I realized that you need a teapot for a tea cozy. Luckily, I found one in your neighbor's kitchen. So you stole a teapot. So I made you super special tea and put in every tea bag I could find in the oh. house. It's very strong flavored, which means it's good. Would you care for some company with your cup of tea? Thanks, I'm not sure if you're supposed to use all tea bags at once though. This is the, yeah, this you're is thoughtful. Welcome. And yes, it was thoughtful. I thought about it for several hours before doing <laughs> it. Because it's the thought that counts. It is, you're right. Here, have a seat. I found this one over there. You can have it. Let me introduce you to our <laughs> guest. This is his lordship, the <laughs> Earl of Jam. That's Mrs. Buttertump. And that handsome fellow is a sock I glued eyeballs to. <laughs> uh, so the, one of them is Earl of Jam. Who the fuck is the... That's Miss Butterdump. And that handsome fellow is a sock I glued eyeballs to. So who's the fourth one? There's four of them. I call him Sock. Because that's what he is. Do you go around calling every human human? Or I guess every kitty kitty? Sugar? Oh, she does, wait. Would you like one lump or two? I would offer you milk, but it mysteriously disappeared today over several hours. Give me two. Oh, yes, very much so. I chewed out my fair share of mystery lumps. It's a surprise every time. Uh huh. So now we make small talk. I'm not sure how it works. But I imagine we must talk yeah, we like like, really small. Yeah, we gotta talk like we're, we're, like we're short. I'll go first. Oh no, I can't reach that box on the counter. How will I? <laughs> Nana, the flushes. Cool's voice drills off into a tiny whisper. You catch the odd word like banana and galoshes, but it's mostly just tiny buzzing. Psh, 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 and there were four of them. What? Okay, your turn. Small touches means well, uh, yeah. The cool eyes light up and she sits up her pupils dilate. Happy smirk tugs her lips. Why, thank you. That's very flattering of you to say. I feel the same what way did I about say? you. You haven't sipped your tea. You sip with an insanely strong tea, which tastes of lemon, cinnamon, yasmin, yeah, chai, and mint. It causes your eyes to water and start coughing. Oh, I must have made it wrong. Do you think it needs more tea bags? What was I supposed to do? No. Or maybe you have a bezoar. If you need to excuse yourself, feel free. I'll stop having fun until you get back. Oh. I promise. Oh, what is a bezoar? What's that, Sock? Oh, yes. I'll ask what? him. Sock was wondering where you get your business. He's thinking about getting into business himself, but is not sure where to get some. Is there a business store? Yeah, you oh, yes, of course. I always wondered what offices were for. The mystery is solved at last. Look at I keep her innocence. Sock appreciates the advice. I can tell. So, I would like to play a game, but you, as my guest, get to help choose the rules. It's called The Most You Know. That's actually a bit mysterious. We each get to ask a question, and everyone must answer or lose their tea party privileges. I'm uh, sorry the rules oh, are so no. harsh. <laughs> the only rule is, you have to ask the questions like this. What is the most blank you know? Then okay. everyone answers. Would you like to play? That seems pretty easy. Yeah, it sounds like fun. Yay! Willing participants make the game a lot more fun and less <laughs> illegal. Less illegal. As the oldest person here, Mrs. Butterdump gets to go first. That was Mrs. Butterdump. What is your question, Mrs. B? Quill stares at the doll called Mrs. Butterdump, which is neither female nor seemingly related to butter in any way. Which one is it? Quill nods several times and looks at you expectantly. Oh, sorry. I'll translate. Mrs. B asked, what is the most adorable thing you know? I have a feeling one of the answers is going to be Quill. My answer is that kitties are sometimes born with extra toes. This is called polydactylism. I am shocked you know that. It makes them look like they have mittens on, and it means they have extra beans. It's the best thing ever. I never thought about that, yeah. You're right. True. Ha ha ha. Quill. Here's just supposed to go, she tilts her head and considering that now that you said something, it's actually engaging. 
I would blush ever so slightly. Let's go! Sock is offended by your answer. What? He says he's at least half a teaspoon cuter than me. Which you one of these? Check your math. Which one of these is fuckers is Sock? Okay, Sock, it's your turn. He asks, what's the most delicious thing you know? Is this guy Sock? What's the most delicious thing I know? Oh, Sock, always thinking with your tummy. Classic Sock. Classic Sock. My answer is fish cakes, and I'll have you know that's a universal answer consistent across all timelines. Uh huh. After a brief pause, listening to Earl and Miss Beeb's answers, the quote looks to you. I fucking knew it. I fucking knew this one was here. Oh my goodness, yes! 100 yeses! Lined up on a yes stage, dancing a yes dance! Okay then. The Earl says that he's changing his answer to yours, and you may be required to change your answer. He's speaking with his lawyers. What? What the fuck? It's the Earl's turn. He's asking what's the most the metal Earl. thing you know. I think my answer is tigers! Tigers are metal. Okay, so you do mean metal as in like tiger for a day. rock. Rock! <laughs> it looks to you. Vacuum's pretty metal. Cucumbers! <laughs> I changed my answer. I changed my answer! Oh my goodness, my heart is racing now. I don't think I did very good that round. Cucumbers! Who goes cry? She takes a zipper tea, then puts it down in the saucer. She takes a deep breath and looks at you hesitantly. For a moment, she sits in silence slowly and slowly blinking her eyes until she finally nods. Okay, it. your turn for a question. Oh, what's the most toast a ghost could boast? <laughs> what's the most you ever had a drink in one day? What's the most dangerous thing you know? I mean, the last one's a pretty obvious one, right? What's the most toast a ghost could boast? Damn! That one. One whole container. I wasn't supposed to. But I did, and gave myself a tummy ache. Was that my milk? <sighs> I feel so much better now that I told you. Yeah, that was my milk. I going to find the empty container and get mad. I hid it under your pillow, by the way. <laughs> I'm bad at hiding things. <laughs> There's a sudden loud knock at the door. Quill jumps to her feet and hisses, then disappears down the hall toward your room. A voice from outside calls in. Police! Open up! Oh, it's Fumi. Oh, there's a doorbell here. <laughs> Doorbell rings, you make your way to the front door and look outside. It's Fumi. You see the detective you spoke to last week standing outside. She has a stern expression. You get the distinct feeling your front door may not survive a legitimate shoulder check from her. You open the door. Hello, I'm Detective Fumi. Yeah, I know. We spoke previously. I remember. Good. Then we can dispense with formalities. Okay, then. You are currently renting this house from... Cat's Meow Vacation Rentals, correct? I have no clue. And you took possession of the property early last week? Correct. She scratches some words on a notepad. Keep the structure Did you have any contact with the previous tenant? Did you exchange information at all, or did they relinquish the keys for the property to you? No, I just arrived and the place was ready for me. So the place was clean and ready for your arrival on... Monday the 1st. Yes. She scratches more notes on her notepad. Just a few more questions. Did the previous tenant leave behind any property or forwarding contact information? And have you noticed any unusual or suspicious persons frequenting the property? Define unusual or suspicious, because there's someone in my backyard. He's making me go out and collect pictures of girls for him, and I'm, I'm not, I don't like that. Unusual. Any person who rises to the level of notability in your immediate surroundings. A child on a bike? Not unusual. A person dressed as a koala for no apparent reason? Unusual. What about some guy that keeps making sexual innuendos in my backyard? Suspicious. A person who appears to be engaged in atypical, potentially criminal behavior. Cervix is in my backyard. Old person walking their dog? Not suspicious. Dog walking a person? Suspicious. But those definitions I haven't seen either. I see. She scratches some additional notes on her notepad. Very well. That's all for now, then. I didn't even have an option to get Cervix out of my fucking backyard. I'm highly certain we'll be speaking again soon. Okay, hold on. I have some of my notes. Where did my tissue box go? There it is. There we go. Okay, I'm all good. Yes, we'll speak again soon. Stands and walks towards a car in unmarked black sedan. She doesn't look back and make eye contact as she leaves. After a few minutes, you get back to the bedroom and find Quill hiding under your bed. Is she gone? 
Uh, yes, it's safe to come out. Thank you for not telling her I was here. I was worried I would have to scratch her to make her go away. And I don't like doing that. I'm also glad I didn't need to run outside. I don't feel like being an outdoor kitty right now. Okay. I think our tea party is over. But I had a wonderful time. Except for the part when the mean lady came and scared me. It was nice talking to you. You make me feel better when we talk. That's a special gift to have. Sure. Brr, that feels so good. Thank you. That's another special gift you have. What, the fact that I can reach behind your ear and scratch? Alright. I better say goodnight. I need to go run around downstairs on all the furniture for a little while for no reason. Good night, friend. Yeah, good night. Don't make too much noise, though. Bearing C? Okay, well, yeah, let's look at this image. On YouTube, sorry, YouTube viewers, you're not gonna be able to see what I'm looking at. But I'll give you, I'll give you a quick rundown of one of the questions I'm thinking right now. Is there a tail of butt plug? J just from like where the tail is and how it is and how it looks, it look, it looks to be a butt plug. Uh, run suave, please. Apparently, I need level twenty on that one. And I don't need much money right now, so we'll run. Oh, it shows Lucky's only level 15? Well, cool. Hey, uh, yeah, that ass. Hey, let's quill your kitty. I just wanted to know you did a good job. You became a professional tea drinker. Or an iced tea drinker, if you prefer. I drink iced tea. That's all. Thanks for coming to my tea party. Okay, bye. Damn, okay. Let's go get a coffee from Lotus. Lotus! Hello, my friend. Welcome to the best coffee place True. in all of I don't Sabrosa. even drink coffee. My sister is away at the moment. No! But I would be very pleased to oh, make you know, your Demi order. What can come in right up? A coffee guaranteed to change your life. Just don't come in the drink, man. Here you are, my friend. Be well, drink well. Thank you. Let's go. It's still early when you hear your doorbell ring, you're still towering off from the morning shower, but luckily you mostly dress. The sound of the doorbell sends Quill racing down the basement. The last time she made that trip, you didn't see her for a few hours. If you're reasonably sure, she'll stay out of sight, so toss your towel into the laundry basket and open up the front door. Bottom aisle is there, she's holding a full armload of mixing bowls and various baking ingredients. Her face lights up in a broad smile. Morning, sugar. I have to tell you, you've got just the sweetest little rose bushes out front. I dare say, the flowers are almost strawberry blonde. Well, like your hair? Give us a kiss. I was thinking about you all morning, and I don't feel like imagining us? it no more. I don't know, man. She's a in and kiss both your cheeks without tossing her supplies. She smells like a cow. Alright, sweetheart, why don't you show me to your kitchen? I got some dough proofing already, and we're ready for step two. <laughs> Thanks, sugar. Part of the job description, I dare say. Really? Gracious me, what a cute little house you've got. Yeah, ignore all the paw prints on the this ground. This place has always caught prints. my eye, but I've never found out who the owner is. There's always <coughs> someone Sorry. writing it short term. I've always wanted to ask them why there's so much Nipita Kataria growing out front. They've got bushels of it. The Pete, what a there's quite a few odd characters in the neighborhood, it doesn't surprise me. Yeah, it's been a great place to kick back in our next. Peter, what? Mint sugar or catnip. Sorry, I took a course on botanicals a few years back, and sometimes I still use catnip. the fancy names. The two of you move to the kitchen, and Monomo quickly takes over. She places down her supplies and told the nods with satisfaction. Perfect little kitchen. So I have catnip nice in my front too. yard. Glad to see it. Great. So this morning, sugar. I'm gonna treat you to some of my homemade Cinnabons. One of my mama's secret family recipes. Ooh, okay. The secrets are lemon zest and buttermilk in the dough. But you did not hear that from me. Okay, why is there a pillow under here? Or, wait, that's a bag of flour. I closed down the bakery this morning for its monthly cleaning crew, so for the next couple of hours, I'm your personal pastry chef. Sound good? I'm ready to help with always my dream to be a baker's assistant. <laughs> well, that's just wonderful, sugar. 
I'm so pleased I can be a part of this momentous moment in your life. So momentous. What about oils up the kitchen counter? God, the internet has ruined the term oiling up. <laughs> it gently needs a large amount of dough for a few moments, then she begins to roll flat with the rolling pin. So did things not work out with ale sugar? I thought for sure I had noticed a sparkle in your eye, huh? That was lovely, but the sparkling line is for someone else. We went somewhere together. I hope we spend more time soon. I see. Uh-oh. Bottom up flattens the dough and sprinkles a mixture of cinnamon and sugar all over it. Then, with obvious expertise, she rolls it into a long rope, cuts into even size pieces. She places the newly cut and much more cinnamon bun shaped goods into the baking dish and covers Those up. Those will need to proof again for a while, so we got some time to kill. Here's where the recipe is called for mimosas and charming company. <laughs> Bonoa retrieves a bottle of orange juice and a bottle of champagne. She pours you and herself a glass and raises cheers to cheers you. Cheers to sweet summer adventures. To socially acceptable morning drinks. <laughs> well, sugar, if a gal can't help herself to a little sparkling OJ, there's something wrong in this world. After a short while, a few more drinks, Bonoa grows more and more giggly and vivacious. Vivacious. <laughs> a few semi-scandalous comments you make. Have her laughing and softly shoving you away and becoming aware that she stands closer and closer each time. Finally, her cheeks flush and her words a little breathless. She smiles no knowingly at you. And then a timer goes off. You hear it ding. Oh, there we are. The buns are all proofed and ready to go into the oven. Let's not keep those little sweet darlings waiting. Bonobo runs across the kitchen, waving her hands delicately to the side. Or side to side, and you can't help but admire the way... Her breasts balance as she moves. Jesus Christ, man. She puts the baking pan in the oven and sets a timer. She winks at you. She closes it. Perfect. Now we just gotta give him about 30 minutes to get all poofy and good. 30 minutes? That's actually pretty fucking... I'll make the icing now while we're waiting. Pretty good. Do you mind handing me two cups of cream cheese? Oh, I mean two sticks. I'll start sifting the sugar. Sugar. <laughs> Yeah, well, massage your shoulders. Noticing Bonobo rubbing her own shoulder, you walk up behind her and start massaging, uh, start to massage her. Without missing a beat, she reaches back and pulls her hair, pulls her hair out of the way, gladly extending your kind of Oh, that feels so good, baby. Am I gonna need to, am I gonna need to... <laughs> your thumb stretch down her shoulder blades and you realize that her whole back is a this labyrinth of stress and tension. You discover a knot and dig in with more ferocity, gripping and kneading with all your strength, your hands can bear. Jesus Christ! Oh, yes, baby. Oh, my God! Your hands suddenly cramp for the strain. It's the most formidable knot you've ever encountered. Frantically scanning the kitchen for support, you, you spot Bonneville's rolling pin. You reach over and grasp it, raising into the air like a holy sword of tension slang. You use it the rolling pin to attack the knot. Bonneville responds and... I don't want to click this. I'm not gonna... I'm afraid of what sound Bonneville's gonna make. Oh. Now your elbows and knees and heels are somehow involved with the full body effort. The rolling pin nearly buckles under the pressure, but you finally feel all the muscles in Bottomwell's neck finally release their tension. I'm scared about the noise she's gonna make. Gee, I, I'm getting more and more nervous every time I click. <laughs> more than a little winded when you hear Bottomwell sign up utter rapturous relief. That okay, was feel. the best massage I have ever had. Whew. Now, I haven't exactly had a whole lot, but in terms of Apparently comparison, this was like nothing I've ever had before. My pleasure, thinking to follow up. Yeah, sure. Bottom out smiles, you draw closer for a kiss, and she gladly returns it. You share a whisper soft smooch, and for a moment she stares at you ser serenely. You're interrupted by the sound of an alarm very loud, very close. It startles the two of you. Ooh, those are the buns. They've got to come out of the oven. Bottom out quickly dons her oven mitts and takes a delicious smelling tray from the oven with practiced aplomb. <clears throat> Jesus, my throat hurts right now. It's hurting. Not hurting. It's just very fun. As you salivate over the glorious bounty, Bonnebelle's phone beeps. She checks her. Her smile fades and Sugar, I just got a text from the cleaning crew. They said there's a situation down at the bakery. Something about a gas line. Ah. Bonnebelle rushes to gather up her things, and she rushes back to you and kisses you. I've got to run after all, but... Well, thank you for... everything. Yeah, apparently that massage, you fucking needed it. You're gonna have me walking funny for a few days. That was incredible. Usually people you always say that after something else. incredible. Oh, well, thank you. Make sure you finish the icing and don't let those buns go to waste. That I'm needle. I'll leave them. Thanks, love. See you again. See you. The door closes and you saunter into the kitchen, take a moment to uh, look at the cream cheese icing with the best, and then eat cinnamon buns until you're absolutely stuffed. 
A plus, baby. Let's go. Okay, July 11th in the afternoon. We have to go to the cafe to meet with Al. Uh, Bonobo. Hey, Daryl. Just a little note for me to tell you I'm thinking of you. I just wanted to know I had a wonderful time and hoping we can get together again soon. I'm thinking of something really special I'd love to do if you're feeling sweet on me. Take care and have a great day. Okay, uh, well, we gotta go to the cafe because it's a date and we can't really pass up on those. Unless there's somehow two in the same day. I'm still fucking pissed about that Casey thing. Not the not from last episode, episode two. You're over the cafe slightly late after getting caught behind an ice cream truck for several blocks. The place is busy today, but Lotusville gives you a friendly wave. to meet you not slowly and winks when you meet your eye. Searching the cafe, you finally spot someone with a pink hair. You're surprised, however, to see that it isn't Al. Dorian is sitting on the table, sipping an ice latte. He's thinking of you to join. Hello! Nice to see you again. Hello, Dorian. Gorgeous weather today, yes? Perfect conditions for a cold drink and some shade. Actually, yes, they were. I love a good bull market. Gets the blood and a money pumping. Market. Do you mind having a seat? I wanted to chat with you privately for a moment. And here's the perfect opportunity. Since L is temporarily indisposed. Um... What's on your mind? It'll only take a moment, I promise. Okay. I just wanted to apologize if I came across as rude or condescending the other day when we first met. It was not my intention. I don't agree with the whole angry father slash older brother stereotype. You know what I mean? Getting out the shotgun, asking, What are your intentions? I've been speaking with Elle, and she's indicated you know about her condition. Yeah. Do you know what I'm talking about? Uh, you mean her narcolepsy? Yes, precisely. To get right to the point, Elle's condition has made her very vulnerable. Yeah, I can see why. She has been taken advantage of in the past, and even assaulted by people she's dated when she's fallen asleep in their company. What the fuck? I was not expecting that. Oh my god. Fuck that. Ew. Gross. Ew. Fuck So, that. I take the responsibility of watching out for her very seriously. You, 100% man. I get it. That's fucked up. I see. Where's for the my part, it puts you wherever you think you should be put. I'm not Elle's keeper, or your chaperone. In any case, Elle has been talking about you non-stop since you dropped by. And she has that sparkle in her eye imploring me not to be overbearing or difficult. So I shall do my best not to. <laughs> <laughs> my first effort will be I get it though, not man. to explain in grim detail the consequences if I have misjudged your character. If that you is, mistreat my sister. That is completely fair. I think we understand each other. More than you realize. Excellent. Impress Dorian, let's go! Oh, by the way, here. A little something to show my sister a good time. What? Dorian reaches into his wallet and extends a small stack of cash towards you. There must be a thousand dollars in his hand. No oh, thanks, I've got All that right. covered. Suit yourself. I got I got a I got enough money. Dorian turns away from you and he raises his uh, from a seat smiling broadly. Well, there you are. We were just talking about you. My apologies for taking so long. There was a very chatty person in there who wanted to tell me about her nine Jeez, grandchildren. Nine grandchildren? I didn't want to be rude. She was very, very proud and had a lot to say about each one. <laughs> oh, well. You have far too much patience for your own good sometimes. As Elle turns to you, you notice her slyly tuck a strand of hair behind her ear and smile. I'm happy to see you. Thank you for coming. I hope Dorian made you feel welcome. Happy to see you too, Elle. I'm happy to hear that. Yum, yum, yum. Sounds like we're all happy. Yeah. All right, you two. I'll get out of your hair. Have a great time. Thank you, you too, man. Wherever you're going. Elle, I'll drop by later tonight on my way home. Let me know if you want to have dinner. I'll have Jeeves prepare more foie gras. Foie gras? That sounds good, Dorian. I'll see you then. Adieu. Adieu, yep. As Dorian leaves, he waves at Elle, who returns to gesture. She's perfectly still, a gentle smile on her face until she he's out of view. When she he's out of sight, she seems to relax, returning her attention to you. Feel better? Oh, just a bit. It can be a little hard to chat with Dorian around. He has strong opinions. 
and many, many of them. I can see why. Secretly, I was hoping he wouldn't find either of us interesting enough to stick around. <laughs> was he polite, though? He didn't do his scary big brother performance, did he? No, no, he didn't. <laughs> he would be so grouchy if he heard you say that. Well, he didn't. No promises, but I'll do my best. So, are you enjoying your vacation? I hope so. I can't tell if my town is good for vacations because, well, I live here. True, fair. Are there tours? Have you taken any good pictures of... birds? I've never done a staycation in your own town. The birds here are world class. I'm having a great time though, truthfully. It's because the people I met are so wonderful. That's very kind of you to say. Or at least, I hope it is. Yeah. Do I count as one of you the do. people you've met? Never mind. I'm fairly confident I know the answer to that question. So, you'll have to forgive me, but I'm not very good at going on dates. I didn't plan any activities or bring any flowers or anything, so I hope you're not hoping for a surprise cake or turnips. Oh, turnips? Not a big fan of surprises, especially for It's already the best date I've ever been on. I'm sure forget that one. It's already the best date I've ever been on. <laughs> well, I know you're teasing me now, but I'm going to pretend that you're bad at it and accidentally making me feel happy instead. Oh, okay, good. You can tell the elf still isn't entirely at ease before you can figure out what to say next. You notice the Lotus coming. Lotus! Hola! Aloha! Hola, and hello. aloha, and hello. Welcome to the Queen Bean Coffee House. Man, your enthusiasm is really just contagious. Nice to see you both again. I'm here to take your orders. And also to ask if you'd like to make a donation to the Chubby Bunny charity drive today. Chubby Bunny? Oh, goodness. Chubby Bunny. That sounds adorable. What exactly is a Chubby Bunny charity, and how do we help? It's so great. If you make a donation to Chubby Bunny, the Queen Bee Coffee House will give you a free bag of marshmallows. Uh-huh. The larger your donation, the more marshmallows you get. Our proceeds go to the Sabrosa Animal Shelter, which does in fact take care of bunnies. If you know, you know, Chubby Bunny. Now, we can't legally tell you to put a whole bunch of marshmallows in your mouth, because that's a joking hazard. But let's just say you'll be in good company today if you do. So people have already done it. Looking around the cafe, you notice most people are stuffing their mouths. <laughs> I'm trying to say Chubby Bunny. Hey, Kelby! Chubby Bunny! Woo! Been trading my whole on? adult life for this. Yeah, your adult life, that's up for sure. Sexy Bunny. Just shut the fuck up, Dimitri. What do you think? Do you guys want to make a donation? I... I would love to, actually. Bob begins to reach for her furs. Here for the animals. Oh, wow! So I'm gonna be generous of you. Thank you. Of course. Hold on. I'll go get your marshmallows right away. Wow. That was so kind of you. What a wonderful thing to do. Thank you. This is such a thoughtful thing to do. Most of the time, if our family donates to a charity, a donation they send a receipt? check and request a donation receipt. That's a bit fucked. It loses a bit of the magic, yeah. I think. When daddy is just trying to offset his taxes. Oh, fuck that. But, listen to me. Still talking about my family issues. I just need to relax and have some fun. Maybe I can ask you some questions this time? Yeah, go for it. <laughs> Alright then. What, what oh, do you fuck, do sorry. for work? The fitness and training. I should have guessed. I was looking at those biceps yeah. and imagining what... Oh, oh, oh. Er, well, I mean, I thought you looked rather lumpy. Okay, ow. But in a good way. Okay. I mean, <laughs> how about another question? Yeah. This is kind of a strange question, but I'm always interested in the answer. What is it? What's the weirdest dream you've ever had? Oh, this is a, this is a really weird dream. A nightmare, actually, I had as a child. So I'll explain it to you here. Um... It was, I was in my parents' bathroom, because there's only one bathroom in the house, and it was the one in their room, for like showers and all that. Um, so I was in their bathroom, and I went, and I was, I was on a, I was sitting at a small table, playing poker with a werewolf, a vampire, and Frankenstein. 
And out of nowhere, this floating red shirt comes and eats everyone, and I was so scared of red shirts after that for like a solid week. I was seven. Luckily, me and the werewolf survived, so we're good there. I remember it so vividly. Me and the werewolf, we were chill butts. I had a fine exam, I haven't studied it, and then all my teeth fell out. Oh no! Ew! I can't stand dreams like that! I <laughs> hate, like, I was playing Inscription not too long ago, and anytime I had to pull my own tooth out, it just, ugh, I hate it. I have a recurring dream where I'm stuck in a bathtub, and someone keeps knocking on the door to show me the family tree. <laughs> it's a bit weird, Lotus pops up suddenly interrupting your conversation. Okay guys, I ran as fast as I could! Here yeah. are your marshmallows! Whoever can fit the most in their mouth and still say Jobby Bonnie is the winner, supposedly. Makes sense that you wouldn't have seen it. Once more, I cannot encourage you to put too much food in your mouth. But, I mean, who's gonna listen to me? Enjoy! Look, these marshmallows are shaped like little bunnies too. Are they just peeps? <laughs> Do you want to go first, or should I? I'll go first. All right. I'll help you keep count. Thank you. All right. Good luck. But not too good. I think I've got a sporting chance. Maybe you do. Maybe you don't. Who knows? Pick up a bunch of marshmallows and gouging their relatively density and squishiness. You feel a high degree of certainty that you can fit six. Elle watches you with eager enthusiasm her sparkling anticipation. Two six. You defeated Elle in the game of marshmallows. Uh, rapidly, it's like you were born to do it so except I think she chubby bunny clear today. Oh my word. Chubby bunny! I can't believe you made that look so easy. Just don't, just well don't fail. Done. Don't fail. Alright, it's my turn. <clears throat> Here goes nothing. Mm? Mm. Ew. I don't like that noise. Uh, I'll switch to some marshmallows in her mouth, doing her best not to giggle as her cheeks buff up one point. She has to stop and wave her hands in mock frustration. My mouth is full. You hand her another marshmallow, she's up to five, she manages to push it with a delicate finger. Mm-hmm, <laughs> I'm ready. That counts, you got to five. <laughs> I, I heard Chubby Bonnie. Elle starts to laugh, her lips puckered and barely contained the marshmallows, finally she awkwardly chews them and laughing hysterically when she's done. Yay! <laughs> I did it! I think I may have a hidden talent. They found <laughs> stuffing your marshmallows in your face and saying the words Chubby Bonnie. Well, I gave it my best shot, but it looks like you were victorious. Ooh. I assume that you've had a great deal of practice, yes? This is probably how you spend your weekends? 30. Really like marshmallows. Well then, I feel like you deserve to win. I hate marshmallows in real life. Sorry to interrupt, but I just wanted to give you a special treat Thank for you. coming in today. On the house. Thank you, Lotus. Would you care for a strawberry milkshake? I got two straws. <laughs> oh, that's that the sounds wing lovely. Ever. Thank you. You're welcome. Enjoy. Thank you, Lotus. Oh, uh, I suppose we're sharing at least one straw. Yes, two straws, one straw berry milkshake. I don't mind at all. Great. Come on, two hearts. Oh, come on, two hearts. You and Elle drink the milkshake together, and her expression is one of pure delight the whole time. Oh, would you look at the time? My bus is going to be here soon. The stop is just across the street. You don't mind waiting with me, do you? Not at all. Saying my seat's literally the best Wonderful. I can do. Wonderful. Yes. <laughs> I'll take some of her drink to make sure it doesn't go to waste. Her mind seems to wander and she smells her <gasps> When she stops to take a breath, she smiles and reaches out for your hand. She squeezes it twice. Thank you so much for a lovely time. I really had so much fun. I hope we can do it again sometime. To date, let's book it and make it happen. Sounds wonderful. Oh, there's my bus. Take care. I'll see you again. See you later. <sighs> and rushes across the street. You watch her the whole way, but she doesn't turn to look the light back. Okay, I'll take a B. Oh, wait, was there a picture? No, was there a picture somewhere? Fuck. Alpha. Hey, it's me, Alpha. I hope you remember me. I'm the girl who's having a super normal date with you. We have scheduled free on dinner on Friday the 12th. Maybe grab like normal food, like pizza or apples. Or are you free? Friday the 12th. Literally nothing. So yes, I am free. Hey, it's Al, you know the sleepy girl. I just wanted to learn that I had a wonderful time. Sorry about my brother. He sort of butted in. He's like that. No, he's fine. In case fish wanted to know how much I enjoy, and we could do it again soon. Take care. Oh, I don't think I'll then. 
Yeah, yeah, that makes me so bad I can't even tell you. I'll come pick you up. I have Alfonso drive us. He's a great driver. See you then. I'm so excited. Let's just head to the beach, because that's literally all I can go right now. Heading to the beach as it's on settings, you find yourself wanting to stroll the sandy shore without rhyme or reason. Water looks especially inviting. You eventually kick off your shoes and walk ankle deep in the warm, clean, clear water. There to be a lao or gathering a short distance away with the beach otherwise deserted. For a short while, you stand on the brink of the sea and land night and day, just taking the serenity. The sound of laughter snaps you back to your senses and you decide to head back towards your car. There's a... Oh, let's go. There's a sand between your toes as you drive away. Let's head back home. Okay, we need to upgrade uh, Lucky. Lucky is fucking... Ugh. Right now. Uh, once again... I'm gonna do Lucky. Just get all of them above 20. Oh no. Taking another walk around the hospital. Pass by the hospital and take a moment to look it over. You can't see in the lobby a flock of tourists, all with various and various vacation woes, full body sunburns, faces smacked by surfboards, someone appears to have consumed a bad, bad coconut. As you make to continue on your way, you notice a bottle of prescription medicine on the ground. It reads, Take one randomly, warning side effects may be sexy. There's a single pill in the bottle. The prescription is signed Dr. Thelma MD. What do you do? Despite how insanely reckless it seems to be taking someone to discard a medicine outside a hospital, you just do it. The medicine tastes better and it immediately makes you lightheaded. After a few terrifying moments of self poisoning, you suddenly do in fact feel sexier. A small voice in the back of your mind is screaming at you, telling you to never do this again. They manage to ignore all oh my gosh, well, my one three to ignore it on your merry way, let's go! Oh no, wait, when is our day with Alpha? Black Falcon keeping. Well, let's go to the mall. We haven't been in the mall in a while. Maybe we can uh, meet up with Eli. And when we decide to stop at the mall, see if anything interesting is going on. The place is busy as usual with tourists making endless purchases of swimsuits, spicy popcorn, and cinnamon buns. Walking past the serious gash upon machines, uh, promising what appear to be thousands of offerings of toys, stickers, tattoos, underwear, and plushies. You mull over, uh, you mull over where they try to like put a dollar in a pocket. Putting a dollar into one of the machines, you turn the crank and a cute little ball comes out. It has a thousand dollars in cash! Jesus! After a moment of shock, you wonder briefly if you've won a grand prize of some sort or happened upon a strange money laundering scheme. You stuff the cash in your pocket and depart quickly just in case it's the latter. Let's meet- oh, at home, okay. Let's meet up with Alpha. Oh, that's right, she's picking us up. Waiting outside your house for Alpha to show up, something on the porch catches your eye. You notice scratch marks on some of the beams supporting the deck. Some look fresh, but some are obviously much older and painted over. As you're inspecting, you hear the sound of a horn from the street pulling your attention away. There's a limo parked in the front of your house, electric, so it pulled up silently. For a moment, you're not sure if it's here for you. Suddenly, Alpha pops out of the sunroof. Hello! I'm here for a super fun, super normal date. Ah, yes, a limo on my super normal server. Hey, person, you look great, great and very unfamiliar. <laughs> yes, thank you. You look great, too. Very great. Thank you. And very unfamiliar. Uh, yeah, okay. Wow! You climb into the limo for a moment, you're stunned the interior is not at all like a normal limo. Yeah, I can see that. Everything is custom ultra high end, and the sound system, the lights, and the seating is the most extravagant vehicle you've ever seen. Have a seat. There's sparkling water, sparkling wine, sparkles for everything you could desire. What's this? I wonder what this is. Wait. What's why? What's wrong? You look concerned. No, it just does about the sparkling concern. lights. <laughs> Sorry, okay, I didn't let her good. finish. But let me know if they're making you nauseous or anything, and I can turn them down. The woman pulls out into the street and you accelerate surprisingly fast. You're driven back into your seat and Alpha loses her footing a little. Ah! Alpha lands on your lap and you laugh. <laughs> Excuse me. Alpha always puts pedal to the metal. I'm used to it. Apparently not. So, what should we talk about on our super normal date? What do normal people usually talk about? Oh my god, about? what's my suave at? 27. Talk about work and stuff, and we really experience right No, no, it's okay. I'd love to tell you more about myself. Then go ahead. Have you ever heard of Sunaloids? Do you know what they are? That's in the real world, they're called Vocaloids. That's what Hatsune Miku is. They're a subset of strong AI based on nerdical engrams of the Yeah, I know, I know what. Yes, that's exactly right. I know exactly what Vocaloids right. are, or Songaloids in this case. Gosh, no one's ever answered like that before. You must be very smart. Or cheating somehow but probably just smart sorry there's a bit of cut there but i i had to go so it's now a, a lot of hours later so i'm sorry gosh no one's ever answered like that before you must be smart or cheating somehow but probably just smart anyway i used to be a sunlight but then i became a real girl the fuck the process is a bit complicated and confidential 
so I won't bore you with the details. So, like, you used to be, like, the owner of a songaloid, and then you, like, came out? But yeah, and sort of thing? I decided I wanted to keep singing, and I'm still with my label, and now I've had nine number one albums. Holy shit. So that's me. How about you? Your story seems to be your own speech as your wonder. Oh, um, thank you. Yeah. Not many people know about it, so please don't tell the tabloids about anything. The fuck is a tabloid? Alpha pushes a strand of hair behind her ear slyly. You can tell even from the sparkling light that she's blushing. Okay, I just gotta make sure I'm not echoing, right? I'm not echoing? No, I'm not echoing. Good. There's a sudden sound that catches your attention. It sounds like a harmonic chord on a guitar being strummed. Alpha reaches over and presses a button. Yes, Alphonse? Is everything okay? Alphonse's voice comes back over the speaker. We arrived at the pizzeria, Miss Alpha. But there's pizzeria. a problem. Looks like a 120. The fuck's a 120? Oh no. Tell me what a 120 is. Alpha pushes the button to lower the passenger window and sunburst of cheer. Oh no. Alpha! <laughs> Alpha, we love you! Sorry, was that Sir Vix? The fuck? Alva closes the window again. She looks crushed. She buries her face in her hands and moans sadly. Someone must have leaked to the press I was coming. How? Was Did you tell someone? I was hoping to have a slice of pizza before anyone recognized me. No. Oh no. Oh no no no. Just a second. I'm gonna get you the 15 buff. I'm gonna have to push through the crowd. Alpha gasps and tries to stop. You slip out a limo through the sunroof and dive headfirst into the crowd. Let's fucking go. There's a crush of people crowding the side above. Someone let's zoom the equator inside the pizzeria. You grab two slices of pizza, telling Luigi to put them on your tab, and you dive back through the crowd to the limo. As soon as you're inside again, the limo screeches off. Alpha rushes to your side. You silly goose! You could have been hurt! The first rule of the sunroof is to not climb out. Everyone knows that. Everyone knows that. When Alpha sees the pizza, her eyes light up. I can't believe you did this for me. You goose. You dangerous goose. Dangerous. Dangerous! Thank you. I would love to eat this pizza with you. <laughs> and you do. The two of you ride in silence for a while. The sting of missing out on a normal date is a little obvious. <laughs> Looking around for someone to cheer her up, you see a karaoke machine. It looks like a karaoke machine. Taking a closer look, there are considerably more buttons on it than a normal karaoke machine, and the controls are not written in a language you can read. You decide to push a button. Push the right one, baby! When you push the button, suddenly the limo bursts into music, lights, and special effects. A super pop power ballad comes on, and the disco lights start flashing all around you. <gasps> Alpha gas her eyes still filled with tears, but now filled with surprised awe. <laughs> you scared me! I wasn't thinking karaoke would be a good idea for a normal date. But I guess, since our normal date is ruined, we should aim for an extraordinary date. An out of this world one. Alpha takes the microphone and starts to sing along with the track. You and Alpha sing karaoke for over two hours, making your way through the top 40 lists for the last 30 years. Alpha laughs and sings her heart out. Her voice is pure magic, and after the two of you break out the sparkling wine, she somehow becomes more and more desirable. She's in the middle of a song when her eyes meet yours and stirs something in you. The way she's blushing, the way she winks at you. Baby, you're all that I want. We're lying here in my arms. This seems a little extreme right now. You shift over to her and start making out with her. Alpha drops her microphone, sighs softly, and kisses you. She climbs into your lap, the two of you kiss and tie. Okay. <laughs> After a while, Alpha pulls back from you gently and smiles. Thank you. You're such a wonderful kisser. Why, well, thank you. I've been told I that. I get back now, though. I have a big concert tomorrow. Probably shouldn't be hungover for that. She kisses you softly once time and sighs again. Next time, we shall have to leave more time for other activities. <clears throat> on, on, on. <laughs> Pull up to your house, Alpha's cheek's still burning, and she uh, smiles and kisses you on the cheek. Thank you for saving our normal date by being extraordinary. Hell yeah. I would like to see you again. I'll message you. Thank you. Thank you again. No problem. It was incredible. Alpha waves at you, and a moment later, the limo screeches off at high speed. You go inside, still decompressing from your brush with fame. Oh, let's go, baby! Uh, what's on the schedule again? What do we got going on? Nothing! Perfect. Uh, we need to run some of these jobs, because apparently I'm not... 
good enough in these stats. I'm good at, like, money and all that, so I just need to get these stats up, I feel like. Alpha, hey, it's me, Alpha, the girl you went on the normal date with. Yeah, totally normal. As I know, the date wasn't as normal as I intended, but I wanted to let you know that I had a wonderful time. I hope we can get together again before my concert tour leaves town. I'll let you know when I'm free, then you can let me know if you're free. And if we're both free, we'll get the, uh, well, you get the idea. Hey, Karen, thanks again for such a wonderful date. No problem. Well, let's just go to the cafe. Pick up a fucking coffee from Lotus. Gosh, how am I going to lift the water tank that high? At least I want a bra today. Oh, a customer. Um, just ignore whatever you just heard. Not the weirdest thing I've heard. Oh, yeah. Aloha. By far, Hello. not the weirdest thing I've heard. Welcome to the Queen Bean Coffee House. What can I get for you today? Give me Here that large are. coffee, please. Have a great day. Thank you. You saw last episode, you know definitely what the weirdest shit we heard was. <sighs> Cassie. Um, should we go see Eli? Let's go see Eli. I wonder how they're doing. I right, the moment once more the usual crowd of shoppers and tourists is buzzing around you, joining as an ongoing exercise in patience. Something inside, it's almost as if the very concept of time and day fades quickly from your mind. You're at the mall. What time is it? Mall. Passing by the usual groups of teenagers, elderly power walkers, and various mimes, you actually spot a familiar face in the crowd. Al is standing outside a store, peering in what looks like a man mannequin dressed in a fancy scarf, its man nipples provocatively poking out from beneath it. Al definitely seems unsure. Let's go and say hello. Al looks up with surprise, but quickly seems overwhelmed with relief. Oh my goodness, I'm so glad you're here. I could really use some help. What do you need? I've been walking around the mall all day, looking for a gift for my brother. Oh. But I'm so terrible at shopping. All of my family is. My father used to send our butler to buy all of our birthday toys. Oh. Luckily, Jeeves was an astute gentleman and always knew which of the Santa Cruz Sally dolls I really, really wanted. It sounds good. But that's not important. Would you consider maybe helping me look around the mall and find something for Dorian that he might actually like? No, oh, sure. I'm not sure if it's cheating, but I'm willing to look past it if you are. We'll find the greatest gift any rich boy would prove to have. Oh, wow. Yes, please. That's exactly what I'm looking for. We will find <laughs> it. Zoining. After walking the entire length of the mall, stopping at every shop when marginally relevant to someone of Dorian's interest, you and I have narrowed gifts list down to a handful of items. All right. So, that leaves three options. Should I get Dorian the box of q print cigars, the Bullox watch, or the Smell Private Blend Luxury Cologne? Watch, you can never go. You can never own enough watches that cost the same as cars. I, don't, I wouldn't go with the cigars, just in case he doesn't smoke. Unless Al knows. Does he smoke? I don't know. Um... <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, gosh. Dorian I, would be simply livid if you I was trying to think of which that. one I would like. Cologne seems like one of the least expensive. And two, just... All around something that no matter what you can use. <laughs> well, I don't see how I can go wrong with a gift like that. Unless he takes it the wrong way. Thank you Hopefully again he for being my escort around the mall. And around. It made everything so much nicer having a friend along for the journey. My pleasure, Elle, anytime. Thank you. Mm-hmm. You and Elle return to the store selling your proposed gifts, and Elle surprised the salesperson by paying in cash. The salesperson excuses himself, saying he needs to complete the sale in the back to get changed. Oh, I've got to run so I don't miss the bus. Do you mind telling him to just keep the change? I don't want to be late. Uh, yeah, Thanks sure. Thanks again for your help. It was a huge favor, and I'll find a way to thank you properly later. Bye! Okay, yeah. Bye, Elle dashes off, waving goodbye, and this is out of your sight when the salesperson returns. He asks you what she should do with Elle's change. Keep it as a tip. The salesperson is ecstatic and rushes off into the back and store to tell his co-worker. Gathering, uh, as a person who's worked in fast food, keep that fucking money. Gather up your things and you'd be aching from a few more hours of walking, you turn to your car and mall clutches. Why didn't we meet up with Eli? Whatever. Something's going on at home. Shit, what's going on at home? As you're around, we hear the television on the living room, turned up fairly loud. From what you can hear, it sounds like there's a nature documentary on. As you sneak a look, you spot Quill sitting on the couch watching. Looks like she's taking notes. Lions are active at night. <clears throat> Lions are active at night and seldom roar during the day. Okay, watch closely, Sock. This is the important part. 
A single lioness on her own has no chance, but the whole pride of 30 is here, and they are experienced hunters. Oh no, bud. Look away, Sock. This proved that a big pride of lions could indeed bring down an elephant. There. Okay, write that down. We'll scribble some notes on her writing pad. Alright, let's see what we learned today. What did you learn, Quill? Big hunter kitties can defeat anyone if they have their whole family with them. Mm -hmm. The best way to hide is to make friends with meerkats and boars and eat bugs. Maybe. And if you have five metal kitties, you can form Volcrom, who is the mightiest kitty of all. Volcrom. These are all great new kitty facts, Sock. We should add them to our plans. Maybe we can find more kitties to help. I don't know if you're gonna make Volcrom. I don't want to eat bugs. Hey, Quill. <sighs> Quill bolts under the couch, but after a quick moment, she sticks her head back up. Oh. Sorry, I thought you were that cucumber I trapped in the fridge. That thing freaks me out. You trapped in the fridge? I was just watching some educational stuff about kitties. Yeah, I figured. One cannot learn too much about kitties. It's 33. Oh, that's what I then. Let's learn some key facts. Really? You would like to learn some facts about dangerous kitties with me? Sure. Yes, that would be very good. You sit on the couch and Quill snuggles up to you. You scratch her hair as you watch the documentary and she winds up purring happily throughout the whole thing. That'd be a hard thing to do. Purring throughout the entire thing? Goddamn. Uh, when the documentary Quill turns over, you get her voice. Do you think I could be ferocious? If I really tried? Yes, yeah, well, so you got a pretty good uh, stock and I will help you. Yes! I think so too! I have a great head. Much better than my feet. Yeah. Thank you for your wisdom. I agree with you completely. Okay, it's time for my nap now. Talk to you more soon. See you later, Quill. Quill gives you a snuggle and then lays down on the couch and falls asleep. Probably best to get on with the rest of your day. What's Mio up to? The call of the mini golf draws you back to the laziest legs. <laughs> Fucking Fortnite reference. You're gonna resist its siren song. Grabbing a worthy club and any on pink ball you set to work. What is your game plan today? Hit the ball as far as possible like an absolute ass. Swing the club with your eyes closed by not. Run the calculations on your phone for maximum performance. Hell yeah. After a good 40 minutes on your phone, running calculations to a scientific calculator, you're ready to play. After 18 holes of raw scientific genius, you've successfully beaten your best score. 18 under par. You the course much better, than, uh, much later than intended. Satisfied with your victory. Hell yeah. I'm satisfied with that shit. Apparently, we need to level up suave. Because holy shit, is it important later on. Let's just level this shit up. Cafe BB, Lotus. So Lotus. I thought I could do it, and I was very wrong. Those poor chickens paid the price, only to be wasted. Uh, can I get contacts for this, please? Dimitri, shut your gross chicken-eating mouth. We have a customer. Hi. Oh yeah. Hola, aloha, and hello. Welcome to the Queen Bean Coffee House. Hi, Lotus. What can I get for you today? Large coffee. Here you are. Have a great day. Thank you. Who is at the beach? Sands are you scorching hot when you arrive, just despite how early it is, you down a pair of sandals and hope for the best. There's the usual crowd of bikini clad sunbathers and a frisbee throwers dotting the beach. The world is your oyster. What do you do? Now let's take a swim. Take a dive into the ocean, becoming one with the water. After frolicking in the waves for an hour, you feel content. Try off hitting the road feeling more than you arrived. Oh, Eli. Hey, big news. Sit down, deep breaths. Remember my sugar, uh, <laughs> sugar. I got bonded on my mind, apparently. My super boring day at work that I wanted to sa you to save me. Got moved. Three years for corporate incompetence. Let's move to the evening of the 14th. What do you say? I don't got anything going on, so I'll be there. Yay, it's happening. See you then, sweets. See you then, Eli. I literally have nothing else going on at the afternoon, or the evening, right? You did say evening, right? Yes. Okay, I won't play you off this time. Uh, let's, let's head back to the arcade. Let's see if... You swing other because she's meals around, but she doesn't appear to be working. Great. You said to play a few games before heading out? May as well, hey? What would your favorite deer punter game? You know, it's a sketchy looking guy trying to feed quarters into a machine. The cabin, of course, only takes tokens. After several failed attempts, he gives him frustration, leaving his bucket of quarters on the floor. Once he's gone, you said there's no remorse quandary with accepting a bucket of quarters from the universe. You take the bucket and head out. You have $127 in quarters. Hell yeah. Oh, 
Okay. Let's go to let's go see Eli. See what they're up to. Eli, you're at the mall, which is somehow even busier than last time. That patron seems to grow with every visit as does the taste of recycled air. Make a way over to Chick Boutique and see Eli with a customer. The customer seems unsure, but Eli is exploding with energy and charisma. Nim, Nim, oh, Nim, Nim. Nim! I'm telling you, buddy, this is the exact look you need to bring your game to a new plane. I don't know, Eli. I just... I don't think I would look very good in leather. And those pants aren't really pants. No, they're not. The boy leans in closer to Eli, and you have to strain to hear there's him. No, there's no pants on the bum. No! Or the crotch! That's what makes them fun, Nim! Imagine how convenient they would be. Like, if you get an itch, it's so much easier to scratch. And none of that uncomfortable bulging when things get exciting, right? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> After his encounter with Lotus, I could suggest. Then she's genuinely terrified for a few moments. He clears his throat and now just college tries to summon up some comments when he speaks. Eli? I can't really tell if you're being serious. Oh, they are. <laughs> oh, you're no fun, Nim. You're supposed to pretend for at least a minute that you're into my great ideas. We talked about this. You agreed. Did he? <laughs> okay, wow, sorry. It's just, there was that one time you sent uh. me home with all the edible underwear, when I was pretty sure I stressed the inedible nature of undergarments that I preferred. Oh, details, details. Here details, you go, lovely. Details. Aphrodite's mighty tidy whities The most oh comfortable, God. sensible, but still kind of pretty briefs on the market. <laughs> Thanks, Eli. You're the best. Yeah, totally. They're the best. Fish posh. You're ten times the gummy bear I am. Okay, no. ciao for now, my delicious little rabbit stew. Nim taps his credit card and walks out flustered, but since your smile, you approach the checkout. Eli doesn't seem to have noticed you yet. Tisk tisk tisk. Flirting with the innocent boy like that. How could you? Oh my gosh, you're here! Yeah! Eli hops over the counter and kisses both your cheeks. He also gives you a chin, your chin a little pinch to better admire your face. Such a fine, kissable face. Well, thank you. Oh, you mean Nim? <laughs> Don't worry, I flirt with him all the time. It's practically a second language between the two of us. Between you? I don't think he's getting it. But don't be a jelly bear. Nim is too precious to actually try to seduce. He's baby, and I love him. He's pretty good, I'm so glad you're here, though. Thanks for having a date with me here at the boutique. Yeah, no problem. I've got some boring stuff I gotta sit on here, but I simply couldn't wait one more day to see you and squeeze you. <laughs> but don't worry, I'm going to make this hella romantic. I got champagne chilling in the back. I've got fancy things to dress you. Oh with no! Me. It'll be just like a date, except basically free, which is my favorite price. I thought it was gonna be potluck, but our last day was free. I'm sensing a pattern. What are you sitting on? <laughs> well, I am a fan of pulled pork and double entendres too. I think I've got some protein bars in the back. And if we get extra hungry, there's always the edible undies. No. They're not so great at first, but like many things in life, if you lower your standards, you can probably enjoy them. I'm a very picky eater. I'm good. Eli's phone beeps and he... Oh, he... Never mind. I thought they were they them. He practically laughs with dramatic display. Ah! Again?! Only been two hours, and they've called me to storage nine times. Nine! Jesus Christ. They should at least buy me dinner if they're going to screw around with me like this. <laughs> okay, listen up. You are now in charge. I grant you Eli's magic charisma powers while I'm gone. What are the odds one of the girls are going to walk in? Take care of customers until I get back. Bye! See you later, Eli. Eli rushes out of the boutique, leaving you stranded behind the counter. Smiling pleasantly, you can't help but feel some of the Eli magic charisma bubbling in the back of your mind. While you're waiting for Eli to return, you catch a customer entering the store out of the corner of your eye. Who is it? It's Lotus! You recognize her first. Oh, I've never seen tables of unmentionables. Lotus! Hey, how's it? Oh, it's you! You're still in uniform? What are you doing here? Do you work in the chic boutique now? Where's Eli? I'm one of those people that do anything Eli says. I'm just watching the store for now. Oh, yeah. Eli's got a lot of those around. But I'm not sure if you can help me. 
Uh, what do you need help with? I just, uh, don't know if I feel comfortable talking to a stranger about... Nah, we're good friends, Lotus. Uh, well, yeah, we're good friends. Yeah, okay. I can help you out here. You might actually be a little more helpful than Eli, actually. Eli is just gonna talk about lingerie. You see, I have a date tonight. Oh, who's it with? very, um, special date. Who, who are you going with? Yes, yes, I know, I know. Oh, Lord, it's got a date. Good, good for you. Her. I mean, it's good for you. But... It's actually my third date. And third. I wanted to maybe. Nim? Well, I want to dress in a certain way to really get my date. Uh, I know what you mean. Excited? I know what you mean. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Uh, you're ready to give a very special present and you want to give the paper wrapping <laughs> paper. Yes! Thank you! You put it so much more eloquent. Oh, let's go! Oh. I need to upgrade for love. Let's go. What do you think? Will you have anything I would look good on? A lotus? Um. Fuck. <laughs> Using me to calculate the optimum lotus. Uh, which one am I? So, Lucky's at 26. Tech Savvy's at 28. So, let's do Lucky. Is that a lavender teddy with a matching garter bag? Yep. That is so bold. But yet, it's actually kind of cute. Let me see how it looks. Hey, yeah, go in the change room and see how it looks. Lotus disappears into the change room for a few minutes. After a short while, she calls you over. Well, how do I look? I'm just getting in closer to see if I have to censor anything in post. Doesn't look like it. Okay. Perfect matches your attitude to your inner. <laughs> You're just as full of cheesy pickup lines as my brother. No, I'm not. Don't you dare compare me to him. But, um, think oh, fuck. Sorry, Lotus. Lotus changed and returns. I'm sure Eli would have insisted first on something more dramatic. Something with a lot less fabric. It was actually nice to have a friendly face helping me. Here's my payment. You can keep the change. Have a great day, and thank you again. No problem, Lotus. Let's hand you some cash after taxes you left with a hundred dollar tip. Oh my god! A little while later, Eli returns. He flops down with a big fluffy chair and groans. Sweet spirit of Judy, I dislike stairs. The south end escalator was out. So I walked all the way to the north end escalator, and that one was out. <sighs> you could have just walked up at that the point. The elevator was preoccupied with a sweet little saltwater taffy in a wheelchair. And I couldn't bribe any large men to carry me up. Sorry, man. No matter what steps I take to avoid them, it's always stairs. <sighs> you would have been a lot better if you just anyway, went on the stairs. Here. Anything exciting happen? Not much. One customer I helped Lotus from Queen Bee to a lavender teddy with a matching card about. Uh, I mostly just missed you. Aw, you cutie. <laughs> I was missing you too. Oh, thank you. So, hey, there's a decent chance that I'll be fired today. Just FYI. What happened? I was hoping to get one more chance to fool around in the back room with you, though. If you'd be down like a clown. A sexy clown, I stress. That's one way to purpose this room. Is it hot there? <laughs> You're cute when you're pretending to be modest. Maybe keep that up for the next 30 minutes or so. How much am I gonna so, have to blur? Is that a yes? Wanna go in the back and play a little Red Rover? How many times am I gonna. What, 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 put your guess in the comments now. How many times am I gonna have to blur something? One's all you need, baby. We're just gonna do it. He leads you into the back of the store. This time he's noticeably more soft and seductive. I'm going to preface this by saying I am not gay. I am asexual, and I still find women romantically attractive and men not attractive at all. You can be hot, I don't care, but like, I'm, I, I'm, not, I'm not interested in men, okay? <sighs> this is very uncomfortable. He pulls off a shirt which seems to land on the floor perfectly folded. Wow. And before you know it, he's naked and hard. <laughs> <laughs> it's not every day you see a <laughs> naked man on your screen. <laughs> He does himself running his fingers along the shaft while gently caressing your shoulder with the other hand. No, it seems to probe against the wall. He's purely feminine, purely masculine at once. You can see why I thought he was gender fluid. He gets you to the ground, slowly sliding you on top of you. It just hit me. We've had sex twice in this game. And one of them's with Eli. 
I'm going to have to read this because it's going to be all censored. He guides you to the ground, slowly sliding on top of you before kissing you. He touches your face and gently bites your lower lip, then proceeds to undress you. Wow. He kisses your neck, your stomach, your thigh, then he slides his tongue over to your privates. He starts to suck, to nibble, to flick his tongue, and he starts to impossibly gentle, then grows into a frantic rhythm. You feel him fingering softly at your bum. <laughs> Just say ass. His rainbow hair smells like some exotic essential oil. You orgasm hard suddenly, almost out of nowhere. Eli keeps sucking and licking you until you can barely stand to be stimulated anymore. When you go to return the favor, you can see he has already come. He smiles sheepishly. <laughs> Whoops. Got a bit too excited, I guess. You kiss him and stroke him into a long after climax. You two kiss and touch each other long after coming, such as your excitement. When it's over, Eli throws your fancy board a towel and laughs. Damn. You get better every time we do that. Wait, what? I'm actually starting to hope that maybe things don't work out between you and Eero. What? Which, on a side note, is just a bitchy jealous thing to say. I say that kind of stuff. It's on brand. Excuse me? When have we done Ooh, this before? Let's get some water. You and I finish cleaning up and getting dressed, and he directs you to an employee loungy part of the store and gets gestures for you to sit. So, we've got at least a little while before the suits come back from the warehouse. Let's chill. So, tell me what's on your mind. How are things? How are things with Eero? Damn, it's got serious all of a sudden wait, after don't just answer. I saw that look. <sighs> as soon as I said her name. What's wrong? You really were showing, but she's... Uh, oh, doing both of you. damn! I didn't realize this was Fuck. a thing. Uh, why didn't you say something sooner? Okay, first off, let's clear the air and look at the pretty blue sky. If that's how you're feeling, we def def definitely need to put a lid on this. Eli gestures back and forth to you and himself. I mean, I was 50-50 on whether Eero would actually open up to you. And I didn't want to pass up on a little summer fun. But I can see Eli is complicating matters. And if there's one thing I'm not looking for, it's commitment. Or complications. Damn, we are reversed on the first we one, man. Had fun. Why don't we just call it here? What do you say? Maybe for the cool. best. Say no more. No, seriously, I might ugly cry. <laughs> Here, just to prove things are cool between us. Eli yeah, reaches over to purse and opens it and takes out a huge wad of bills. Catch. A little gift from Eli, so you can show my sister a good time. You unfurl the bills are exactly five. I cannot accept this. Sure, why not? I just got this from another sugar daddy slash mama. <laughs> There's more where that came from. <laughs> I said came from. <laughs> Whoops. Looks like the suits are coming with their inventory report. You'd better skedaddle. Yeah. Listen, it was fun. It was really fun. I could tell. If things really don't work out between you and Eero, then, well, you got my number. Take it easy. Take it easy, man. Thank Sexy you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, <laughs> bye. See you, man. Yelly shows you to the door, just as four very scary women in sunglasses and black suits walk into the store. Hi, ladies. I'll put some tea on. Let's dish. You walk out of the mall. We're turning around feeling just a little bit, not really sure what to make of everything. But you decide to carry on. You stuff the You complete all of Yelly's dates. No, I didn't. Whatever. Let's just go home. Upgrade. Uh, tech savvy. And I have more than enough money, so we do not need to do jobs, and we'll upgrade to Lucky. Anyway, so I want to go into Cassie. Hey, sweet cheeks, heads up, but I got something important to tell you. You might be scarce for a few days, I've got an important job to do this weekend, I can't even be distracting me. I can do it for free to hang out, I think I might let you treat to a fancy dinner, and this is a subtle way to warn you, save pennies this week, or I'll talk to you again soon. I don't need to save pennies, I got 12 fucking grand! You lie. Oh, mm, G. Hey, listen, I know we're not really on anymore, but I want to let you know I had a great time. Between you and Ira, well, you got my number. It's been a slice of fun. Ciao for now. Man, everyone here says ciao. Well, hey, this is uh, that ass, yeah. You know, Serena keeps a trace of food you eat. He orders more. It's true. The negation is to let you know that someone is selling your ass at 100 cans of tuna and salmon sardines to your automated grocery bill. Change to cancel. Okay, fine. Okay, well, update the order. Your account has been deducted. Zero dollars. Thanks to the classification pass. Wow, hey. Thank you. So, where should we head out? Let's go to the cafe. I want to see Lotus. Lotus! As you arrive at the Queen Bee, the cafe doesn't look especially busy. There are a handful of people seated at the tables outside, but the inside is practically empty. 
You push the door open and are immediately greeted by Dimitri, who throws his arms open as though he's about to give you a hug. Ah, Cyrano has returned. The great lover and poet is back to share with us flirtatious wisdom. Lotus, come out here. <laughs> Lotus. It is time for another lesson in love. Ah, I see. Lotus appears from the kitchen. Dimitri, I told you. 73 times. 73 times. Do not ask for help with my love life. I know I was 73 because I get back on the chalkboard. Look at all these little stick counters. Oh, Lotus, 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 Lotus. Surely you do not want to pass up a chance to find love. Didn't you have a date yesterday? Please, Lotus, think of the love. I mean, I'm here and I'm busy at the moment. Perhaps we should give some space to me through those who seem too interested today. Oh, but they did. But Lotus was afraid to continue the chase. Lil is sweet. And we had a great time. But I'm not sure if he's the one for me. Oh, I'm sharing my personal life. Look at what you made me do, Dimitri. <laughs> Please, sister. Just one more harmless crash course. And then we shall award our friend with delicious coffee. And no one is hurt. I'm pretty sure it's my pride that'll be hurt. Not to mention the embarrassment. Aha, she did not say no. Let's let the love teaching begin. Oh, gosh. Oh, sorry, Lotus. All right. Next customer who comes in, you must flirt with, Lotus. Our lovely friend Cyrano will signal you important love wisdom if you get stuck. You will be successful if you can secure the person's phone number. Sound good? Sounds good. Do you have to make my personal life sound like a competitive sport? Ah, but Lotus, it is so exhilarating. For you. I think it is perfect. For her, it's fucking... You won't abandon me, will Blowing you? up her mind. I will not oh, let you down. Uh, thanks. Yeah. Okay, I'm ready. Who's gonna walk in? Just then, over the customer walks in. A girl with white hair. Incredibly attractive with large breath. Ah, uh, this is this is Cali. Pentagly to you that this is a bad idea. Demetri gives you the thumbs this up. This is Cali. She too is well known for her. Yeah, I know her. ways. I've met her twice now. Um. <clears throat> oh yeah, Aloha and hello. Welcome. You, does the Lotus swing that way? I know Cali does. Is there anything that I can get for you? <clears throat> Darling? The girl puts up both her arms on display case and starts eyeballing the small desserts. Um, I don't know. I need sugar. Mm, I need to eat something sweet before I die. Die is extreme. Have you got anything that can save my life? Like, something that'll blow my hair back? Oh, well, actually, a lot of our desserts are top notch. We make most of them ourselves, and some are from a local baker who's phenomenal. Do you have a preference? The girl looks up at Lotus and smiles. Well, I definitely have a thing for caramel. Lotus eyes wide and surprised Dimitri do as well as he gives you a secret thumbs up. That's... that's good! I... Time for her to like, take the opening. Well, um... I think we have caramel available, if you want some on a dessert. Heck yes! That and a little whipped cream. She looks over to me. Well, do you like banana bread? That one is my personal favorite. Oh, I like them all, sweetheart. Bananas, peaches, whatever kind of fruit you've got. Why'd you say those too? Oh, that's good! I also like those things. Out of the two fruits to say, you said bananas and peaches? Hey, look at us. We've got so much in common. Does everyone, I think everyone in this game might just swing both ways. I think that's just how this goes. Mm -hmm. Hold on, let me check out those desserts in the back. The girl leans over the counter to get a better look behind the display. Her breasts hang free just in front of Lotus's face and Lotus begins to blush. Uh, whoa, oh. Is your pain like because of determination? Yeah, um, we also have milk. 
if you like to go with Bezar. The girl looks at us and down at her own breast. She smiles. Milk sounds lovely. I'm doing great, apparently. All right, I've decided. I'd like a chocolate muffin with caramel sauce. Ring it up. Yes, of course. That was a bit rude. Will Ring it up. Be all? I think so. Unless you've got any other recommendations. Dimitri walks out. Oh, uh, uh, no. Here you are. That'll Dimitri just walks out saying, me. Here's a fiver. Keep the change. <laughs> Thank you. Um. Lotus closes her eyes as though her next sentence hurts to say. Do you think I could, uh, get your number? Maybe she doesn't swing both ways. Maybe I lied. The girl smiles, she licks her muffin, then takes a bite, and then she reaches over to the till, takes a pen, and writes something on the napkin. You bet, babe. Give me a call sometime. I I'll try. I mean, I will. Cool. See you around. The girl takes a bite of her muffin, then walks out with a nicely seductive stride. After the girl's gone, Lotus sets out a relief sign, and Dimitri rushes over to hug her. Lotus, you did it. You flirted with a customer who was very flirty back. I wouldn't say flirty, more of like trying to get into her pants as quick as possible. Oh my gosh, my heart is racing! That was so crazy! I mean, that was. You literally just had it all hanging. Literally. Your suggestions kept sounding crazy to me. They but, fucking worked, baby. Well, they worked. They did. I don't know if she was quite my type, but. Oh, maybe you do swing both ways. Pretty attractive. Oh, yes. She was trouble. Very much trouble. She knew it, and she brought enough to share. Fair. Even though that was insane, I actually have fun. So, thanks for your help. Let's just say someone said only smiles and nods. Yeah. To thank you, I will make you a cup of my Let's Super go. Brew Supreme. Super Brew Supreme. I think you'll find them more stimulating than our house blend. Lotus goes into the back and then hands you to go cup. Oh, you are in for a treat, my friend. Oh, if he's saying that, then okay. oh no. But we have to get ready for the rush, Dimitri. And it's your turn to clean the grinders. Trust me, Lotus. I am an expert I knew it. at grinding. I knew it. Don't be weird. Thank you, As Lotus. you wish. Take uh, care and make sure to visit us again. I'll come back every day, Lotus. You already know. You take your drink and depart. Those with Cali, if if you sip those wasn't exaggerating the cup of coffee's very good. Alpha. Hey Alpha again, you're famous. You seek a famous girlfriend, so things have been super busy, you'd love to see you tonight. As is, are you busy? Do you want to come to my hotel penthouse or swim with me and maybe more? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Nothing. Wow, okay. Um That's amazing, yeah. Oh yes, yes. I'm looking forward to seeing you again. Maybe you can bring swimsuit and any other suits you might need. See you then. May his wife bring <laughs> exit the coffee house, then walk right back in, maybe? Dimitri's on the then phone. I said to him, if you love it so much, why don't you marry it? Marry what? Of course, that marriage would be illegal in most states. Still, the heart wants what it wants. What is he marrying? I wish him all the best anyway. I have to go. No, 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 Dimitri, Dimitri, Dimitri. What was he marrying? Hello, my friend. Welcome to the best coffee place in all of Sabrosa. Tell me what he was marrying. My sister is away at the moment, but I would be very pleased to make your order. What can I get for you today? Just give me a large coffee. Coming right up. A coffee guaranteed to change your life. Uh, yeah. Here you are, my friend. Be well, drink well. 35, 33, 37, 33. Okay, so we're pretty good in other categories. Beach time. Who's at the beach? What are we doing at the beach? Every time you head down to the beach, there are beautiful people in bikinis, so you decide to get some bikini therapy and swing by. You take up a spot on the bench, the ocean clearly filling your view, and decide to do some people watching. After a little while, you see a familiar face with an even more familiar set of boobs. Mia, for a moment you don't recognize her in sunglasses and a bikini in the sunlight, but then again, it's the boobs. Rather than going over bothering you, you decide to watch what she does. You see her spread out on a blanket and prop up an umbrella and sit down and get comfortable. Only to take out a portable gaming console and start playing. Yeah! PSP, Nintendo Switch, Game Boy. Uh, you laugh and spite yourself mulling over the weather and go bother her when you see her side of console Damn it, purse. stupid thing. I just got you back from repairs. 
Curse you, drifting joystick! Curse you, Switch. Mia Momo! Mia, Mia. Mia Muda. Not Mia. Is it Mia Muda? Miyamoto. Jesus Christ. I've been reading and watching too much anime and manga. Jesus Christ. You see her toss the console aside in anger after a few moments. She bathes in a disappointment and then lays down. You see her unhook her bikini strap and begin to suntan angrily. A minute later, she appears to be snoring softly. What do you do? Sneak over and fix the console, baby. You quietly sneak over to Blanket and pick up her console. Using your amazing technology and you know to fix most drifting issues by using the console's locate me vibration feature. You just have to put the console down and sneak away. Once you're out of the safe distance, you text her, letting her know that your thoughts of you were drifting, of her were drifting through your mind. You see her awaken to the sound of her phone alarm. She sits up momentarily, flashing her breasts before she covers up, grabs her phone, and reads it. After a few moments of being very confused, she reaches for her console and turns it on. She fiddles with the controls and then laughs. <laughs> she looks around for you and moment the text you back to say that you're a real creeper. She then, she then shows you thanks you and sends a kissy face. She shovels back under her umbrella and fires up the console a moment. Later, you hear the sounds of orcs being killed. You pack up and head off to continue the rest of your day. I'm such a good guy, what can I say? <clears throat> Not Alpha, Mio. Hey, how's it going? Reading any good books lately? Not that we've got any pleasantries, but I've got a question for you. Would you like to go on a date? A date date, like somewhere nice, stretching out just to behave? I think I'll just go on a hill, it's understanding of the wine there. They look three fools, so what do you say? Tuesday the 16th, around lunchtime. It's the best excuse ever a day to drink. Sure. Uh, great. I'll see you Tuesday. Mark the 16th. Mark your calendar. If I just get an hour to kill tonight, I could use an hour to kill some. No pressure. I could just use an extra brain, steady hands. Hope to see ya. So tomorrow afternoon, right now I gotta go to the fancy hotel though, because we gotta meet with the Alpha. Whatever the hotel, there are two men dressed in black suits wearing sunglasses that immediately approach you. This Alpha is expecting you. They lead you over to the private elevator, which one of them unlocks with a gold key if you do get in. There's only one button that leads to the penthouse, so you press it. The elevator is strangely fast, though you can barely feel it moving, and within a few moments the display reads 20. An alert dings the door opens. Alva's waiting right in front of the elevator doors, and she throws her arms around you immediately. Yay, you made it! I'm so happy you're here. Alva kisses you softly on both cheeks. She's wearing a bikini and flip-flops, and she looks up and down with discerning eyes. You brought your swimsuit? We're going in a pool, right? Yeah, I'm ready to swim. Hooray! I'm excited for swimming, and wine, and bringing wine into the pool, even though we're not allowed. We're not allowed to? Okay. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. Alpha leads you around the hotel room, which would be more likely to describe as a palace, perhaps. The room is lined with couches, beds, pool table, jacuzzi, and pool access, an open-air shower, a massive screen, and all sorts of vanities. Jesus Christ, I'm talking a lot. Make yourself at home. I ordered us some candy and snacky things in case you're hungry. And the view is so, so, so nice. Yeah, I was distracted by looking at you. Oh, you're so sweet. I got Riz for days. Alpha does it back to you and kisses you. I hope you're doing I hate that purpose. I use that term. Because every time you open your mouth, I want to put my mouth on it. <laughs> for kissing. Sorry, I said that in a weird way. <laughs> nah. Now that you said that, it gets me concerned. Let's swim. Let us swim, yes. Alpha helps you out of your street clothes before she delicately steps into the pool, guiding you in by hand. The water is somehow both warm and refreshing, and all your muscles immediately relax. Alpha then produces a glass of wine out of nowhere. Care for a drink? It's not juice, it's wine. I figured. Although, I guess wine is sort of like juice. I wonder why they've never made wine juice boxes. You know, the little kind with the straws. I'd love some wine. Alpha hands you a glass and offers hers and cheers. Cheers. To fun, friendship, and felines. Yep, felines. Well, cheers and take a sip. You and Alpha swim and chat for a while. The conversation is and delightful. She tells you that her concerts are going well, but you but will be finished soon. That's when she gets a troubled look and then an awkward look as she tries to hide her troubled look, then a more troubled look. Uh, what's bothering you? Wow. Either you know me really well already, or you're a psychic. Wait. They call me are Alakazam. You a psychic? Tell me what I'm thinking. This moment pause, then Alpha laughs. <laughs> Time's up. It was meatballs. I literally I just had spaghetti earlier. Word. Meatballs. Why do, you, why do you love that word? Anyway, I suppose I shouldn't fool around. If <laughs> I have something important to tell you. So, I really, really, really enjoyed our last date. Somehow, everything went wrong, and the date was still... Magical.
And I've been thinking about you all week. And drawing little doodles of us, walking and kissing, and... Sorry about that. My mic got disconnected and you heard that. Doo -doo -doo. Uh, yeah. Um, other stuff. But I made a bit of a mistake. And I started writing a song about you. Fuck, stop upping the suave! Oh, song no, sucks, no. my bad. It's not like that. Actually, this song is stupid catchy and really fun. Hell yeah. But no. The mistake I made is that I was playing it when my manager came in. She heard it. And why is that a bad thing? And, um, she reminded me that I have a contract that's... Well, it's not very fun. Can you not get in a relationship? Because I'm not allowed to have a boyfriend or girlfriend as long as I'm on tour. Well, that's outrageous. Why did they force you to do that? It's stupid and complicated. Which is exactly how I feel about myself right now. Honestly, I'd get rid of that manager. That manager fucking it sucks. Makes me so mad. When I told him about our date, the label was okay with it, as long as it didn't get out. But then, someone leaked it to the press, and all the fans showed up, and it was a disaster. Your picture was taken, and now everyone is wondering who you are, and if we're... Baby! Couple. Did you tell him to go to uh, youtube.com slash chatter? Uh, it's actually at youtube.com slash at Mercil Chatter. Or any of the other ones. At one of Chatter, Thing Monster Productions. Which is about to pass up one of Chatter as the most subscribed to channel I have, which is fucked up. That's no, not, I'm grateful. Merciless Talks. Mercil Chatter Bods, Speedruns. Any one of them. So to cover for me, the, Patreon? the label is telling everyone you're my dietitian and backup dancer. Ah, uh, okay. But to make sure there's no more problems, they don't want us to date anymore. That's fucked. I'm so sorry. My heart's broken. This is goodbye? Yes. At least, as long as I'm a sensational international pop star. Get away from that record label. I know it's probably harder than just like exiting, me, but still. As soon as we're with someone, a lot of fans get very upset. Trust me, YouTubers are the same fucking way. And especially YouTubers. As soon as they hear the YouTubers in a relationship, they're like, No, you broke the immersion! That's fucked. They're still fucking people. They still want relationships. It's a strange relationship. Also, and I don't like to look at those things too closely, because I love my fans. Also, if you're shipping yourself with a fucking famous real person, that's fucked. You're not in a parasocial relationship with them. Stop it. Fuck it. Like I, I like you know. If you watch my videos, thank you. I appreciate you. I love you. But like, not in that way. But this is how it has to be. I just wanted one more chance to see you, to feel normal. Oh god, this is sad. Pretty. Oh no. Thank you for everything. You swim closer to her and begin to kiss her. Oh my god. At first she's reluctant, you can sense her sadness, but within a few moments she comes alive in your grasp and she starts making out with you. With urgent passion, Jesus Christ. She wraps her legs around you and your hand slips under her bikini and you feel her delicate nipple hard and at your touch. Fuck. Oh. oh, okay. She moans and gets to breathe faster. Oh, yes. That feels so good. Alright, how long will it take for me to blur something? You squeeze both of her breasts and then her hands slip into her swimsuit. Your fingers caress her privates, arousing you intensely. After a few moments, Alpha pulls away. She smiles at you, looking deep into your eyes, and then she floats away from you. Just as you doubting if she wants to continue, she bends herself over the side of the pool and smiles. Make love to me. You nod and slide closer to her. She starts to slide her bikini uh, bombs off as she reaches behind and unhooks her top. There we go. She's naked, revealing a perfectly smooth pussy. <laughs> pussy. <laughs> and you caress her, running her fingers over her vagina and touching her clit, and she relaxes and opens up for you. Jesus Christ. I have to read it, because for YouTube, you're not going to be able to see what's on screen. You lick her pussy, your tongue thrusting inside, oh my god, thrusting inside her until she's panting with desire. Jesus Christ. Press into her feeling her sticky warmth lubricate you. You grind against her until she comes. Ugh. Yeah. She climaxes and you're not too long behind her. The two of you grind and touch until you feel her body drop down, unable to hold herself anymore. 
She breathes heavily for a while and then swims into your lap, wrapping her legs around your waist, and then two of you continue to kiss and pleasure each other for over an hour. Over an hour? Sorry, I had to, I had to read that fast and get through that because I'm going to have to censor that in post because I'm not unless you're on Patreon. But I'm going to have to because that was just... That was just sex noises. When you're finally done, Alpha laughs. <laughs> you suck at being ordinary, did you know? Thank you so much. That was... Incredible. I've never done anything like that before. Oh my god. Thank you for taking me there. Jeez. Yeah, no, of course. Not now I... Jesus, that was... Uh, do you guess one last time? Finally, after another hour quietly caressing and touching you and Alpha part, you get dressed and she leads you to the elevator. Bye. My very unfamiliar love. Damn. She blows you a kiss and the elevator door is closed. You walk back to your car and your hair is still dripping from the pool and drive home. You completed all of Alpha's dates. Somehow this one hurt. Yeah. This one hurt a lot. Holy fuck. Oh my god. That's so sad. Jesus. That's, oh my god. I, oh my, uh. That gave me the feels, man. July 16th. Hero. Hey, we just say hit the beach this week. I just noticed that I've been doing a lot of serving, went out a lot, you know, just chilling. We're gonna be going in the afternoon. Wait a minute. Can't make the afternoon. Oh, wait, today won't work on my end. Uh, no sweat. I think Callie, my friend, said Wednesday 17th might work for her too. I'll get to talk to you later. Talk to you soon. Uh, if your time randomly frees up this morning, come to the beach. I want to... This morning, so I can go to the beach. Hey, before we part ways, I want to tell you something. Thank you so much for being kind with me, for being gentle and wonderful. And most of all, thank you for being with me, for making me feel beautiful and desired. I'll always remember our time together. Maybe someday we can be together again. Goodbye, my gorgeous summer stranger. Thank you forever. All my heart. The Alpha Prelude. Damn, that... Oh my god, that genuinely made me a bit sad. Like, just read this line here. <clears throat> just read this line here and tell me that's not the saddest thing you've ever read. Sorry, Alpha. I, I wish I could do more, but I can't. Just take a quick look. I can't see back there with my cell phone. There's you are my mind. only hope, Lotus. I'm just gonna say this. Alpha, at some point, not, and maybe, it, obviously it's like me now, it's probably gonna be a long and lengthy process. Get away from that manager and that, those people, because they're fucking awful. Dimitri is just one gray hair. Don't be silly. D and heads up. We got the customer. I'm, I'm talking like this, like a Joshua person. They're denying you the right to be in a relationship, which I think is a basic human decency. It's like a human right to, like, that's fucked. Oh yeah, aloha. Hola, and aloha, hello. and hello. Welcome to the Queen Bean Coffee House. What can I get for you today? Large coffee. Here you are. Have a great day. Plus one swab, I'll take it. Let's go into town, baby. I walk through town, you spot a familiar face window shopping in one of the clothing stores. It's Dimitri. Already? For a moment, I think he's incessantly scantling a dressed mannequin for the window. Nervous to ask her out. Ah, oh, hello, my friend. How are you this fine afternoon? Doing well. Yes, you have caught me. I was working up the courage, but I fear she will be quite indifferent to me. Wonder why. But no, I am not admiring the fine craftsmanship of this plastic Venus de Milo, but rather the scarf on the one next to it. Ah. If I'm not mistaken, someone was looking at it earlier. I am shopping for a gift for my sister, you see. But I am not so good oh, no, at that this. Was in the mall. Never mind. I always wish to give her things which will embarrass, but secretly delight her. But it is becoming too predictable. Mm -hmm. So now I wish to go for the fatal blow. Something sentimental and sweet which will make her cry. What are some things she brought up once that she liked? Do you have suggestions? Maybe donate a cause in her name, not go for an appropriate teller, so, but tell her it's something sent The scarf is good, but wrap it around an actual lotus. Oh my, this is truly an excellent idea. You do know what a lotus flower is, right? From one lotus to another, this 
is an adorable thought. Yes, I am loving this. My friend, for your help with this, I shall share my super secret fail-proof method for making women fall Be yourself. in love with you. Be yourself. What is it? Means over and whisper something in your ear. You actually can't quite make out what he says. But somehow you feel an increased confidence when he finishes speaking. Take my secret and go. But use it only for good and not evil. And now I must shop. Farewell. Thank you. Dimitri leaves and you carry on. Oh, hell yeah. By the way, I was feeling pretty good about it. Just be yourself. That's the best way you can do it. Anyway, let's go to the winery. Mio! Oh, Mio! Over in the vineyard, you see Mio waiting outside, sitting on a fancy stone fence, swinging her legs back and forth. Hello! You to walk right up to her before she notices you even let out a startled yelp when she yeah! finally goes. Oh my goodness! Sorry! <laughs> you startled me! You startled me, Jesus! Sorry, I was really deep in thought there, I guess. Unless you're a great deal sneakier than I thought. It's a ninja, it's time you know. <laughs> I mean, who isn't these days? Hmm? Huh? You know, I've lived here for basically forever, and I've never done a wine tour. What's up with that? How long have you been 21? I mean, they drive you to the wine. They give you all the wine. This is a genius idea, and somehow I've been missing out. You're a fool. <laughs> Only yeah, answer. exactly. Not the first time. <laughs> Won't be the last time, either. Now, I notice there's no wine out here. So let's stop doing out here, and let's go in. Okay. You and Mio enter the lobby, it's a lot colder inside than out, and the AC seems to be on full blast. Why is the world so hostile to ladies with chilly bodies? Half the places I go to shop or hang out, I feel like I need to bring a blanket. How's a cold-blooded girl supposed to make it in the world? No, I can't Are keep you going. saying I can give you the Tauntaun treatment? Cut you open and wear you like a... Like a skin suit? Wow, I'm not gonna finish that thought. That joke sounded a lot less psycho in my head. Not unless you're a... Uh... Big amalgamation of wires and spaghetti. Moving on. You're a bunch of wire spaghetti. <laughs> God, FNAF filled my mind apparently after this week. Once you make it to the tasting room, a, a small. Some. 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 The only time I've ever seen this word is from Daniel Thrasher's bit about it where he calls it a smell. I think it's smellier. Smellier? Some. Sommelier. Sommelier. I'm sorry. Sommelier. Sommelier? That's how you pronounce it? How was I supposed to know? Sommelier offers you a meal, a glass of white wine, and she assures it's both fancy and worth it. Ooh, this one is good. I actually prefer whites in general, because reds sometimes give me tummy aches and migraines. Uh, sorry. And before you give I'm me sorry. sass, I don't just mean the next day. So stow away those smart aleck comments I hear you brewing up. I feel attacked. You should. I burned you. That's 1d6 damage. One <laughs> Oh, God. So, Nerd. kidding aside, how's the vacation going? Half over, right? Are you on track for all the trouble you wanted to cause by now? Yeah, I'm burning through cash, though. To be honest, some days actually have more sense of deja vu. Unlike yours, I'm a little behind. Yeah, sense of deja oh, vu. I hate that. It makes me feel like I'm stuck in a video game and I'm playing kind of bad, so I have to keep doing the reload of shame. <laughs> well, at least today is different, right? We Friday haven't gone Funkins. out and consumed fancy booze during the day yet. True. Brian F. Lincoln's big on the reload of shame. As you and Mia finish up your first glass, the Samaye returns with a the second one. The one appears to be rose. Ooh, that's so pretty. I think I want to dye my hair this color. What color is it? The Samaye jokingly reminds you that one general spits out of the wine after tasting into the winery's many fine silver buckets. I think that might be against my religion. Tell you uh, what, we'll consult legal counsel and take it into consideration. <laughs> After Samaya moves on, Mio rolls her eyes and smiles. Spitting out wine? <laughs> who does that? Quitters, that's who. And spitters. And in the adult entertainment industry, those two are the same thing. Yeah. One of the other guests looks over on their shoulder at Mio, giving her an unimpressed look. Whoops, I might have said that a bit too loud. Nah, you're fine. As the two of you finish the second glass, you hear that the sound of a text message alert and Mio takes out her phone. 
She pokes at it for a moment, suddenly becomes irritated. She holds her phone in front of her mouth and scolds. Phone? There is no message. There's no message. Please stop notifying me about ghost messages. Ghosts are so right? pushy. If I was a ghost, I wouldn't be lighting up some poor girl's phone. I'd be... Yeah, what would you be doing? I don't know. Scaring birds? Something. <sighs> My imagination broke. You know what this face reminds me of? Have you guys ever watched High Score Girl with an anime on Netflix? You look exact. For some reason, your face reminds me of Haruo. I don't know why, it just does. Sorry, that probably sounds like the least important of all first world problems. But I feel like it's going to drive me insane. Uh, I might be able to fix it. For real? You think you can fix it? You're not just playing with my emotions? Nah. Sure, thanks. Knock yourself out. The next step I'm most likely to try is dropping it into the ocean. But you take a crack first. Or else you're gonna crack it. Yeah, switch up on the phone and hands it to you on the setting menu. While you're doing that, I'll BRB. The wine decided it's done with me and would like to head home. Good luck! Mm. I'm thinking fix it thoughts. Fix it. You think over the phone for a few moments and spot the issues right away. It's definitely something even a technical person would likely miss. The only fix takes 30 seconds, or the fix only takes 30 seconds and you're left without wine and company. So I've been throughout Mio's phone once more, you find at least 50 game apps, which all seem to be up to date and regularly played. Tapping on Mio's pictures, follow oh my god, why are you doing this? No, close the phone and wait for Mio. You fucker. Don't do that. As you wait, while also willing the Samaya to return. Mio practically jogs her way back, doing her best not to actually run, but her mouth is wide open, happy and anticipated. Hey, hey! Did you do it? Is it fixed? It is fixed. You hand the phone back and nod gravely. Oh my gosh, there are no new message pop-ups. You did it! Yeah. Oh my god, you're my hero! I was seriously ready to drop this down a hole and swear off texting forever! I feel like I should bake you a cake or take off my armor to reveal my bikini or something. Uh, how does a well-adjusted adult show appreciation again? <laughs> the hug? <laughs> Thank you. You see on the cheeks sometimes when she rubs the back of your neck and back of your uh, back of my neck as well. At the moment, she's, the summary returns notes that your fancy spitback remains unused. She is slightly more hesitant to give you the next class. Don't worry, we're professionals. Professional winers. 50? The wine is so good, we have trouble deciding how many bottles we buy. We wine all the hey, time. Hey, that rhymed. Oh, it did rhyme. And so did that. We're poets. With some reluctance, the summary hands you each a glass of red okay, wine. Okay, I've been waiting for a time to ask you some stuff. And now seems like as good a time as any. Great. I've what got some it? difficult things to ask you about. Stuff I need to know before I can decide if this relationship can continue. Okay, so first we had Eero's baggage, then um, L's. So we're on to Mio now. So we're just with what, Quill and Cassie? Unless I'm just completely forgetting. Are you ready? This won't be easy, but we can get through it. Bring it on. You already tipsy how dangerous can Do you be. Do not underestimate my power. I have the high ground. It's fucking Star Wars reference. I mean, wait, the low ground. The low ground? Is that what it's called? I don't know. Whatever. I got a lightsaber, bitch. I'm not afraid of you. Are you? Okay, question one. Which princess? Daisy or Peach? <laughs> Bowser. I really hope you mean Bowsette or whatever. No. No. Actually, I was thinking of dressing up as Bowsette for a stream the other day, but looking at the cosplay... I mean, I wasn't super comfortable with the resemblance. Let's put it that way. Mm, I see. Okay, here's a trickier one. Tell me about it. In Odoroku Bakari na Magiku Sakana Senshi, there's a scene where Sumi tries to seduce <laughs> Kaito <laughs> at the donut festival. What? My question is, how many times should the writers have had them get it on instead of the zero times they actually did? Okay, good. I the sexual tension was insane for those two, and they were so perfect for each other, and they would have made each other so happy and arg. I am not over this, and I'm not watching their stupid reboot movie franchise because I saw Kaito's design, and they got rid of his hair loopy things. So now, I don't want him to sweep me away to his bed anymore. Hey, I'm right here. Anyway, <laughs> go ahead and answer. I can't have sex, they're clones of each other. Are they? I have no clue. About as many times as I wanted to do the same as you the first time we met, I took Amy, let's go, the ship's gone. Whoa! Wow, I... <laughs> That's cool. I really like 
that. Let's go. <laughs> Sorry, the snap back to reality is sometimes a little too jarring for myself. Yes, I also think you're smexy. What was the I question? Ah, uh, never mind. I can tell I only asked it because it was something upsetting and I needed to vent. It clearly, you got angry at that. The so many returns and Mio quickly chugs the rest of her glass. You're feeling a slight buzz yourself at this point. The fourth glass seems taller than usual. <sighs> ah, very nice. Good year. Nice bouquet. All right, this is the third glass. Fourth. Samaya looks slightly alarmed at this point, but gingerly hands each of you one last glass and informs you that it's an ice wine. <laughs> ice wine? Like, this wine tastes really ice? You don't hold your drinks well, do you? Like, nice, but ice. You just got her to the end. Samaya says that you'll fetch some crackers and leaves. Well, I forget the rest of my questions. Did you have any questions for me? Maybe something nerdy to make me feel better about my personal interests? What anime feels most like you? Hmm, that's a good question. You know, there's this one anime I just finished watching that I haven't been able to get out of my head. The anime is called Doki Doki Gaia Senki DX3. I saw Doki Doki and I'm like, wait, what? And it's probably not actually my all-time favorite. Let's just say it's my temporary favorite. That's fair. I, I know that Doki Doki is like the way they signify heartbeats in Japan. They say like Doki Doki. Like it's like the budum budum that we have here in the states and other places that speak English. So I don't know why I thought it was gonna be Doki Doki. My summer fling, if you will. Uh -huh. It's a Yandere story about this boy who discovers that he has the power to kill people with his mind, but only if he's kind to them. So the whole show is him trying to be as kind as possible to all the people who are awful to him or who are just his romantic rivals for this girl he falls in love with. Mm, I see. <laughs> it's heartbreaking because there are times when he's trying to use his power to defend himself. Like he's getting beat up and he's trying harder and harder to be nice to the boy. Uh -oh. And then he can't be nice to the girl he loves because otherwise, <sighs> well, you see the dilemma. Very invested now. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I said when I read up on the storyline. So, okay, as dumb as this sounds, my favorite part of the anime isn't the Yandere. It's actually the senpai, the girl that the main character is in love with. Oh, why is that? And it's because, well, I feel really, really connected to her. How so? She doesn't have the most screen time, but she's written in a way where she's just sort of a quiet character. Like, the loudest part of her is actually the world just dealing with her. Every time she's on screen, she says something that gives everyone a little boost, you know? And as a result, all this misfortune befalls her. She's got stalkers, her friends keep dying, her family is weird and probably abusive, and so on. Jesus Christ. There's all these dangers, and they're always drawn to her because she's quiet. In fact, they're drawn to that quietness, to that peace about her. They're starving for it. Uh, and I love her, and she's pretty, and she dies, and her death is beautiful, and spoiler, I guess. Let's watch some time. Will you? Oh, all I want in life right now is someone to talk to about this story. I know it's kind of silly, but whenever the universe makes me feel this way about a certain character or story, I feel like I need to slow down and pay attention. Sorry for my trailer. Damn, you're actually If you watch it right. with me, well then, you're good people. Yeah, sure, I don't I think maybe I should have used that spitty bucket. A I'm little. already mm, a little inebriated. A little. That's what you get for not eating breakfast and lunch, I guess. Even if all you want to do is fit into the cosplay you just bought. I don't think I want to hit the next place. Do you want to just go get some fries or something? Let's bounce. Okay, but you're going to have to do most of the bouncing because I think this floor is a bit slanted. Oh, God. Anyway, I'm here to the summer here that she had a wonderful time. No one seems to mind that she's a little tipsy. It is, after all, wine tasting. <laughs> Once you outside, a fresh air perks both of, uh, both of you up and catch me giggling to herself as you call rideshare and look for a place that's surprised. <laughs> it's so weird sometimes. What is? Just to want what other people have. Even their pain. The, holy fuck, that got real for... Holy shit, that got real fast. I was just thinking about the senpai from my show. Sometimes I feel like her problems are better than mine because... I don't know. There are more worthwhile pain, I guess. It's hard feeling like your problems are self-inflicted nonsense. 
It's not that you dislike the pain. It's that you think it's mundane and unimportant. Important pain, hmm? Weird thought. Mio smiles, the sparkle returns to her eye, and she nods, nothing else to say. So, let's get this straight. What do we have so far? Hero. <clears throat> That's the second time this happened, sorry about that. Um, so, Hero had, was it a bad breakup, I think it was? L was essayed, and Mio has depression. So, we're set in those categories, so... What other problems could they bestow upon Quill and Cassie? Okay. Look, I'm going to do something I would normally never do, but I think I've had enough wine to do this. I want to give you the streaming address for my show. Just in case we're not super clear on the details, I play video games uh, naked. I see. People tip me money. Sometimes I do more than take off my clothes. It means I'm a big fat bot. And what? the internet hates me and loves me at the same time. It's very confusing. I want you to watch it. And then I want you to talk to me. Uh, awesome. <laughs> yeah, it is. I mean, I don't get quite as heated or opinionated on stream as I do in real life. But you get to see boobies. So everyone is happy. Just watch it, please. I need someone else to know. Someone to talk to about it. Holy fuck, this is getting real. Will you do that for me? Yep. Thank you. I know how weird this sounds. And I know the wine probably isn't helping. Or it's helping a whole lot. I don't know. Mio's quiet for a while as the two of you wait for the ride chair. She plays with her hair and she bites the bottom of her lip in a way that's kind of sexy and sad at the same time. Jesus. If you didn't see a while ago, not too long ago, not a while ago. <clears throat> sorry. I made a video on depression on the main channel. And I say this many times in the video. I take this shit seriously. Like, I don't, I don't play around with this topic. So, <sighs> Jesus Christ. Before the last arrives, she says one more thing. I have a stalker. Maybe she's free if she said the look in your side eye. She literally holds her breath until you respond. Like right now? <laughs> no, no. Not here. At least, I don't think so. There's this guy, or gal, I suppose, that follows my stream. Okay. He donated a lot of money to me over time. Every time I auction off a make me do anything stream, they always buy it. They've sent uh -huh. me a lot of emails. Emails asking to meet me oh my, ew. or to talk on the phone. Oh, ugh. Ew. And those ghost messages you fixed? Every time they went off, I thought maybe this was it. This was the stalker finding me. It's sort of maybe why they were driving me crazy. Do you think you should start, start, call the fucking police? No, they haven't done anything illegal or alarming or anything. Alarming? They've done a lot of things that are alarming. They're just... They're really into me. I'm mm -hmm. their senpai, is, I guess. This is way more than just getting into you. This this is way fucking more. When the writer arrives, Neo actually squeezes your arm before you get into the car. I think I'm actually going to walk home now. It's really nice out, and I don't live far from here. I just need a walk. I got a lot of thoughts in this silly brain. Uh, you want to take a rush? No, walk. I would much prefer to walk right now. Thank you. Megan's over and kisses you. See you later. Thanks for everything. Don't watch Doki Doki Gaia's Thank You DX3 without me. I won't. I'll know, and I'll cut you. <laughs> I'll text you the website for the stream. Bye! Mia walks away, and the ride shirt takes you to French fries. I got hit with the feels there, man. Okay. Um, let's let's look what that image is. Although the fact that this is a hentai game and a super serious game at the same time is making me a little bit. Uh. Sure. I don't I don't know what to think about that now. Are there any other secret images that I just forgot? Oh, I did forget to look at this one. 
That's just her naked on the beach. Watch out, that crab's gonna steal your bikini. Oh, that image. I don't wanna I don't wanna be reminded of that. Hey, we've got all the quills. That's nice. I've had a weirdly fun time playing this game. I just want you guys to know that. It's calming in a weird way during, like, these parts, not during the sex. Feeling an off pool to go somewhere new, set by the hospital, I mean, why not? You walk into the lobby feeling a little out of place as you see an assortment of people with various degrees of need a, needs a hospital. The nurse is eyeing you, you can tell that you're already being judged for your not needing a hospital vibe. You look around for an alibi. You see a sign that says, read to a child event right now. For a moment, you think that it's an odd type, but you realize that it's intentional. The sign is a photo of L attached to it. You sneak over the direction it's pointing before the nurse works up to gum station to play security guard. Walking to the hospital, it only takes a few minutes before you find the right room. Sure enough, Elle's in there sitting in front of a huge group of sick children holding up a puck. Hello, oh. everyone. Which story do you think we should read today? This is sweet. I want to point out, I'm using two recording softwares right now. Like, literally, I have Streamlabs opening recording the game, and I have OBS opening recording my voice. My computer is filled with videos that are, like, in combined total, like, six gigabytes, which is crazy. I, I, just, I don't know why I thought the need to say that. I just want to. Those enthusiasm crowd and all giggles at their suggestions. <laughs> I'm afraid I don't know the one about Kitty Katsunova. How about Jack and the Beanstalk? I always like that one because I don't care much for beans. <laughs> the kids laugh and agree. After chatting among themselves, they suggest chocolate is better. All right then. Once upon a time, there was a poor village where no one had any food. It's sad. All of the food had been taken by an evil giant with pink hair who lived in the clouds and bossed everyone around. It gets booed generously. I'm no fan of giants myself, but then I don't watch much football anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I like it goes to the joke. It goes over most of the kids' heads, yeah. Let's continue. Elle continues to read, and you can help but feel a little dreamy listening to her. Her calm energy kind of takes over the room until all 40 kids are in a spellbound silence listening. But just as Elle's getting to the part where Jack cuts the beanstalk, she falls asleep. You see her head dip forward, but thankfully she doesn't fall out of her chair. The kids suddenly become worried, and one of them begins to make fun of her. Call her Sleeping Beauty. In your most heroic voice, you point at Elle and say, Oh my, it's Sleeping Beauty. All of the kids spin in their very seats wondering who spoke, but you can see them instantly become more interested in the idea. They whisper, is she really Sleeping Beauty? Oh wow, she's Sleeping Beauty. I knew she was Sleeping Beauty the whole time. After a solid and somewhat tense two minutes, Elle stirs again. She realizes quickly that she's had a spell, but she's greeted with 40 inquisitive children asking if she is indeed Sleeping Beauty. You see her smile, and she has to dab away a few tears. Well, I'm not sure. I'm at least sleepy. Oh, come on, don't... Don't... Give yourself more credit than that. No. Sorry, I have to blow my head. Give yourself more credit than that. Do you really think I'm Sleeping Beauty? The kids agree and it's anonymous, unanimous. Elle beams and softly her voice cracking but with emotion. Well, thank you. That was very nice of you to say. Let's continue our story, shall we? I continue through to the rest of the story and you decide now's a good time to slip away unnoticed before any of the kids give you away. Oh boy, this is giving me the feels now. Um, 12's at 45, thank god. Okay, so lucky is the least right now. Um... Do you have something going on today? Nope, we're free. Uh, we'll do tech savvy. Hero. We moved to Beach City Wednesday 17th, that's today. Now we gotta come in and with the like, uh, Callie learned to like you because I tell her what to do. Uh, basically, today afternoon. I'm there. Yes, victory. Uh, she's tricky and handsy. Yeah, I know. Beach or cafe? Let's go to the cafe. Are we gonna have to help Lotus flirt again? <clears throat> as you approach Queen Bee, you can already hear Dimitri cheering your arrival from inside. Yeah, seeing as it's not very busy, this situation is all the ingredients for another Teach Lotus to Flirt session. As if on cue, as soon as you enter, Dimitri announced it to some. Ha ha! My friend, you have returned. And today, I think, is the perfect opportunity for Lotus to get some more practice in. Yeah! Dimitri, no! 
I'm putting a stop to this before it gets started again. I feel like I've only just now finished blushing from last time. All the more reason that now is the right time. Yeah, right after. <laughs> I'm sure our friend is very busy and just wants a coffee for a ride home. So be it. Let them decide. Cyrano, do you have time for another Lotus lesson? I always have time for another Lotus session. Or Lotus lesson. Yes, the perfect response. <laughs> Sorry, my nose is a bit stuffy right now. I... How do I let myself get talked into these things? I don't know. All right. This time, let us mix up the formula a little bit. This time, I will compete with Lotus to float. Oh, no. Dimitri, you're just going to end up breaching into their pants. Are you crazy, Dimitri? Our customers are not contestants on a game show or something. Do not worry, my sister. You have Zerano in your corner. Yeah. They will give you the answers if you get stuck. I'm hoping you can answer more questions on your own because I feel like I'm pinching you. you know? Gotta learn, Lotus. You can't just, I'm not gonna be there always. Let us see which of us is the true seducer of the family. Jesus Christ. This is creepy, and I don't like it. But I can see there's no stopping you. I'm in your side this time, so, Lotus. Let's go. All right. Here comes the customer now. Hide, my friend. Where is there to hide? You step slightly out of view where Lotus can still see you. The customer is a woman with enormous breasts, even as- Okay, so this is Alice, I'm assuming. Her hair is- Yep, Alice. And her breasts are gigantic. She has ridiculous- a Big cojones. <laughs> Massive badonk. It just reminds me of this one tweet that Cloak made. I'll put it up on screen now. You have to slap yourself on a cheek to regain focus. Ah, hello, my darling Alice. Yeah, Alice. So these two are Welcome becoming more prominent characters. The queen bee. Alice. Is there something special? I has something to do with Casey. It. We have some wonderful cookies today. I baked them myself. In the shape of a little heart, see? I'm on... I'm not getting anyway, so I'm already on Lotus' side here. Oh, wow. I'd love to get delicious. cookie shaped Actually, What is this about? Everything in here looks delicious. What is this about? What are you trying to do? <laughs> right you are, my dear. Present company included. <laughs> you see those struggle for her comeback, but then she draws a blank. She looks to you for support. Signal for a cookie. Coffee reference, signal for a cookie reference. Wow, just look at this breast. Coffee reference. <clears throat> well, everything's delicious. But some things are just sweet, while others are... the savory. That's actually pretty good. So just pours Alice a coffee and slides it over to her. And manages not to slip it off the counter and causes a disaster. Oh, and manages not to slip... Okay, I know. Oh, well. I do like my coffee like I like my women. Yeah. I did it. I'm good well, at flirting. After all that talk about sweets, I can't leave without any. I'd like one of those chocolate-filled croissants, if you don't mind. Your wish is my command, beautiful. Uh, but your wish is also my command, so I will also get <laughs> You're you You're just one. copying him. Oh, my sister. It is not necessary. I have the tongs. Leave the matter to me. But I made the croissants, so I think I'm better suited to pick the best one. She's got a good point here, Dimitri. How is this challenging? I will, of course, pick the plumpest and most delicious one for our lovely customer. Uh-huh. I don't really know what's happening here, but I like it. I don't. Little 60 for help. Uh, it's her sort of generosity. It throws Dimitri under the bus. Seeing for those to go for it. Generosity. Yeah, let's as it up your suggestion, and she nods. I'm doing good with these days. I'm a good wingman. Holy shit. Dimitri, you're really not getting my hint. If you don't give me those tongues, I can't slip our customer an extra dessert. Don't let her know how much I'm attracted to her. I'm a good wingman. Dimitri and Alice's eyes both widen in surprise. Alice smiles, clearly enjoying this back and forth between Dimitri and Lotus, and begins to stammer. Oh, yes, of course. I was, uh, I was thinking of also giving her extra, maybe no. three or four, or maybe the whole dozen, or... You know what? You may take this one, Lotus. How can I compete with one so sure, so exceptional? Okay! 
The siblings hand Alice the bag of goodies, and she fades. Lotus is positively beaming, and Dimitri looks woebegone, as though heavens have crashed have upon him. Have a great day! We hope to see you again! Alice goes to turn away, but then she smiles. Hey, listen. I'm not sure what you two are doing, but it was hella fun and cute. Be funny. And I'll just put it out there, but I've got plenty of love for the both of you, if you're ever into that sort of thing. <laughs> Depending on how close you two are. Uh, they're, they're related, they're related, they're blood related, they're brother, sister. Lotus and Dimitri are both stunned. You see beads of sweat suddenly form on their brows and they look at each other embarrassed in horror for a moment. Aha, uh -huh. no thanks. We do not get along that well. <laughs> I, um, yeah. we don't even like spending time together. We have uh, such uh, 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 distinct, uh, different interests. They they literally like she they literally called each other brother sister not even a moment ago. We don't even like driving in the same car. Yes, we barely know each other. I, honestly, I'm agreeing with this one right here. Seeing you signal her very close to her trance. Did you think she was serious, Dimitri? Huh? She's just trying to get a rise out of us, you goof. Don't take things so seriously. Have a great day, and thanks for the offer. But we'll gracefully decline. I would just shut her down in there. <laughs> suit yourself. No. See you both later. Don't please suit yourself. No. Let's see if this time and then leave. When it's outside, like Dimitri and Lotus both let us sigh relief. Oh, my. That went uh, through dark waters that no yeah. human should ever face. Yeah, really. No more mutual flirting. Really, really uncomfortable. uncomfortable. Really. Plus, I don't like competing with my brother. I like helping him. That's me. Aha. You are taking the words out of my mouth, Lotus. In a completely platonic way. Sweet in a platonic way. Listen to me to both smile at each other. Oh, but that would have been an even worse disaster if you weren't here to help me. So, I'll grab your reward. No need for rewards. Nonsense, my friend. You must accept our gratitude. You have been very good to us. One order coming up. Here I don't need it, but thank you. Stop for my super brew supreme. I definitely take that. Drink it. Increase my stats. Be well, my friend. Thank you, Dimitri. All right, Dimitri, we need to get ready for the rush in an hour. I shall fetch them up. I'll <laughs> use it. Oh, yes. That too. Did you just fetch them up last time and just have it out? Listen, Dimitri, smile and wave at you. Take care. Come again. I certainly will. It is your destiny. I will, yes. You take a sip of the Supreme Brew and it is good. <laughs> you see, uh, flirt with Alice. Damn, I've been... I'm on game with Alice right now. Yeah. You know, Hey, it's me. I just want to thank you for the winery day thing. It was fun, special, and fancy, and I loved it. I hope we didn't get too carried away, huh? Wine is sort of seat of power in my heart. Anyways, I was just thinking of special thoughts on one delay. Another quarter next to get there. That you're cool. I like your face. I'll stop blowing up your phone. Uh, laters. What's that website? <laughs> you never told me what the website. Okay, whatever. Good day, sugar. How's the weather treating you? Got lots of the sun. Speaking of sun, I was wondering maybe Thursday the 18th. Uh, I've got a special treat to make you with curly chocolate sauce. Served a la bon bon. What do you think? Are you busy? Um, the 18th? I don't think I got anything going on tomorrow. Yeah, no, I'm scheduling really good right now, so. Uh, yeah, sure. You're mine. I'm gonna screen a little. My customers are suspicious. Let's see if there's the 18th love. Increase the stat, why don't we? We have 12k in the bank. May as well. Uh, you know, Dimitri's on the phone. I said to him, of course, that okay, we've, are, we've already seen my this. Sister is away at the coming here. Uh, let's go see Eero. What's up with Eero? This is going to be a long episode. Episode 4 is going to be a good one. Arriving in the beach, you're relieved to see it's a little less busy than usual. The throng of pale, sweaty tourists sitting shoulder to shoulder has mostly replaced with mere, uh, mere, or right, actually catching beachgoers. Grabbing your gear, you make your way to the north end where Ira, where the waves were the sickest. You spot Callie and Ira out in the water, and it appears that Ira is trying to teach Callie how to surf. You can barely make out their voices over the surf. Oh my god, Ira, don't let go! You're surfing in that? I have to let go at some point, Callie. You need to learn to fly, little bird. No! I'm not a bird! Or a surf bunny! Whatever animal surfs! The ocean surfs up, the penguins do. I'm a lynx. As in, links arms with you and doesn't let go! I 
think you're enjoying this too much. I'm going to let go. <laughs> no! You're enjoying this way too much. I'm gonna let go. Kelly awkwardly tries to leap into Ira's arms as rather as he does exactly that. Wow. Ah! For about two seconds, the two of them fall into the water. When they surface once more, they're both laughing. Ira splashes Kelly, which seems to make them both laugh harder. That's when they spot you. Oh. <laughs> hey! Look who it is! You got this, Kelly! See? What did I tell you? Listen to that. Everyone can see your potential. Oh, you two are meanies. Ah. Telling an innocent girl such false Innocent's things. far from what you are. But You're on Fei Fei levels of non-innocence. Guiltiness. The two whip. The two women leave the water with Callie running over to you as Zero dragging your surfboard to the beach blanket. To their beach blanket. Yay! You made it! How are you doing? Things are going. Any luck with Eero yet? Just fine. Yes! That's what I want to hear! Uh, Eero has definitely been talking about you nonstop for the last few days. How many people did Eero talk about? Jesus. I got your back. And some tips. Yeah. Okay, before we get all busy busy with visiting, I've got some hot tips to share. What are they? Hot tips! That's what she said. Oh, sorry, focus, Callie. Sorry, did you say you're an innocent girl? Hot tip one. Eero isn't much of a drinker, but she can't resist Bradlers. You know, like grapefruit beer? I did not know that. The only time I've seen her desecrate that beautiful temple of hers was when she discovered them. I brought some today! Good for you. Hot <laughs> tip two! Eero has only ever dated people she was friends with first. I agree with her on that part. Really a feelings first sort of gal. Yeah, but I don't. You might need to give it a little. I'm also a feelings first. I don't go for just sex. It might help to try and make her a little jealous. Let me know if you need help with that. I am always willing to make out with people I'm in good. the name of justice. I'm very good. Hot tip three: Eero loves to wrestle. <laughs> if you want things to get fun and physical, challenge her honor. Oh, I'll challenge it, all right. In fact, the first time she and I had sex was after she pinned me to the bed and my panties slipped and... Well, I'll let you imagine the rest. I'm good. Okay, got all that? Uh, pinned to the bed, panties slipped, got it. Excellent! Sounds like my to-do list for the weekend. <laughs> Just maybe you are as horny as Fei Fei, holy fuck. All right. Have you seen her Twitter? She's nothing but horny on that Twitter. Guys, come on! Stop whispering about how hot I am and get your butts over here. I'm lonely. After Iro and Kylie try off, the three of you decide to play a round of volleyball. Iro insists on taking both you and Kylie on. She makes fun of my fa oh, my fun of hitting Kylie's quote unquote spectacular tits. They do get in the way of spiking. It's okay. They're nice. You look nice. Thanks. Now, are we gonna do this? Oh my god, this is her overconfidence will be her downfall. I beat the shorts off you both, no competition. I'm pretty sure her overconfidence is completely warranted, and we're Shit. about to get collapsed. I should've done on the other one. You better believe it, biatch! These cheeks don't clap. My glutes are too swole. <laughs> She's right, you know. You can bounce a quarter off them. Game on! Didn't need to say that. Oh, that's a cool little image. Although the game gets off a rock star with several Eero spikes, finding various sensitive places to crash. Ooh. Soon you and Kelly are using your two on one advantage to keep Eero running back and forth, tying her out. Bump, set, and. Spike! Oh my god, I spiked it! I spiked the ball! <laughs> okay. Ah, Tim! Eero dives to the ball, but barely gets her palm under it and can't save it. Uh, that's game. Oh, holy shit! I actually uh. beat Eero at something! Wow! Oh, that feels better than sex! I'm right here, you know. I did Tired, stuff too. sweaty, pissed off. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy! Kylie rushes into your arms, squeezing you tightly, and a rush of giddy energy kisses you with surprising- oh, Jesus Christ. Whoa, whoa! Come on, you loons, keep your hands to yourself! Oh, sorry! <laughs> I got a little too excited there. 
For a brief moment, Scully pinching your cheek, you give her a little hope that says, I'd rather be kissing for someone else. Return something flashes across the ear's expression, something like surprising confusion and... Cute little face. Cute little volleyball face. <laughs> Time for drinks. Okay, well. When the three of you get back to the beach blanket, Callie starts handing out drinks. I brought Rattlers! Oh my gosh, Callie. Are you going to try and get me day drunk again? You know that doesn't work. I just get sleepy. I'm like an old lady now. <laughs> Nonsense! How are you supposed to get into trouble if you don't have a drink now and then? Literally, my Kill point. someone. Just drink it. Unless I think killing someone does that. Say no to the grapefruits. Can you, hero? Can you say no to the grapefruits? No. I mean, yes, I mean, I mean, whatever gets me a drink. Yay! Peer pressure! You crack open a drink yourself, and the three of you are soon laughing and talking about local gossip. Oh, gosh, did you see that Lotus and Nim were out on a date the other day? That girl had better watch out. That boy's got some admirers. She's gonna get herself shanked. I almost got myself shanked. I know! He's so cute! Like a little bunny I want to take home. Oh, then get him to tie me up and have his I'm getting in a more comfortable position. I'm leaning back. Ugh, he is not into that, I can tell you that already. Kelly, you're so fucking weird. I agree with you. What? Bunnies are sexy. Changed my mind. You say that like it's an unpopular opinion. Sadly it isn't. Have you seen Rascal Does Not Dream of Bunny Girl Senpai? Not an unpopular opinion at all. After almost an hour just hanging out, you suddenly hear hear familiar voice calling from the parking lot. Hey Beach Bum, look over here! Hey, Cassie! You look over to see Cassie and Alice D. Alice D. Cassie runs to the beach, but sort of stuff into zero. Hey, what's going on here? Are these your side girls or something? Um yeah, you're a side girl. <laughs> um I have no clue what else to do here. There's a brief moment where Cassie's demand for an answer is absolutely more important. Uh, but she quickly melts in your arms and gives you back. Big jerk! Stop making me look gullible! <laughs> this has gotten awkward! Alice walks up to the group and gives you all a wave. Hey, sexy beast. Hey, Callie. Alice! <laughs> How are you? I haven't seen you since yesterday. Speaking of yesterday, I'm already out of stock. Jesus Christ! <laughs> Damn, girl. It's not a competition. You're already my best customer. You don't have anything to prove. Come with me for a sec. We'll talk business. <laughs> Yay! BRB! Oh, don't leave me alone with these two. As LSP and Callie step aside for a moment, Cassie leans in and chat with you more quietly. Air looks around awkwardly and stays quiet. Listen, I don't know if you're free soon, but I just wanted to tell you that I bought a new elf. I'd love to show off to you. I mean, show off, take off, whatever. Maybe you if you've been like good. Oh, baby, you know I'm always behaving myself. That's probably sets of 50. All right, Alice, we gotta roll. Quit flirting with your clients. See you later, Callie. We'll chill together soon. Yeah, I'm sure you will. Netflix and chill it is. My favorite. Sorry, hero. See you soon, sweet cheeks. I guess you. Cassie winks you and then she and LC walk back to the beach to the group of you. Here is completely turn away at this point, Callie gives you a word like Alright guys, we should back it up. I've had way too many Rattlers, and I gotta be. This is definitely a thing now. Me too! I've got plans with Eli to hit the club tonight. I need to find something super sexy to wear so we can misbehave and flirt with cute boys. Be right back. I gotta grab my board. As Zero rushes off, Callie turns to you with confused glare. Hey, so... What the fuck was that? Are you and that Cassie broad banging or something? Cause if you're playing my girl, Eero, I'm officially recanting my support and going on the offense here. It's not what it looks like. It'd better not be. I've seen one too many assholes break yeah, Eero's heart. I don't... This game doesn't go with my values of, you know, being in a committed relationship. But I played Crush Gus, and I kinda have to play this now. Nice, bub. I've got my eye on you. 
I don't want to mess with you. You're All right, fucked. Let's motor. You're fucked. I've got the rattlers. Someone had better come back with me to my place and drink them. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm gonna do it by myself. <laughs> God, I have a pimple on my nose, and it's it. annoying as hell. Gotta hit the road myself. See you yeah, later. sure, we can go. Bye, Kelly. Bye, Put Kelly. In the arm for me. Yeah, same, please. I will. Maybe give him a sucker punch in the head for me. We're good enough. Uh, Kelly gives you thumbs up and jokes. You cool hang out of my place for a bit? It's just up the beach ways. Yeah, let's do it. Good, good. Things are working out. Follow me. I should have said the bottom one. The two of you walk up to the beach in a short ways, turning the corner of a large sand dune. There, find Eros Beach House. Like it? This is my crash pad. It's technically my family's, but most of my bros live out of town now. And my dad hates the beach. So you're burning a beach bum then, huh? Yep. I'm about 99% sure I was literally born in that house. My mom was into all the hippie doo granola stuff. In fact, I used to go out looking for sea witches when I was young. To demand they turn me back into a mermaid. <laughs> but I never found any. Yikes. Come on, Bag. let's go inside. Yeah, let's go. Walk inside the beach house and noticing right away that it's super clean. The sunlight pours through an enormous bay window and the house is wonderfully fresh and out. There are all kinds of workout and sports equipment around the house and there aren't any uh, walls between rooms, just dividers sit, uh, save for the Ross room. No TV, but you see a laptop on the coffee table. Here we are. Home sweet home. Home sweet home. And speaking of home sweet home, I call dibs on the body. Out of my way, sucker. <laughs> <laughs> Here hops over to the uh, only closed door in the house, whistling to herself as she closes and loudly locks it. What do you do? Crack a beer and wait. You listen to Eero perform several old songs while she's in the bathroom, strictly replacing words with puns related to the bathroom. In the jungle, the mighty jungle. What's it gonna be? The lion peace tonight. Yeah, sing along. As soon as Eero hears you, she begins to applaud. Bravo, bravo! Thank you, thank you. Eero comes back to change clothes while in the bathroom. She plumps down on the couch and opens another rattler. After a long spick, she sighs contently. Gosh, I love the summer. Everything is so much better in the sun. Looks better, tastes better, feels better. Kind of makes me wish I was getting some, you know? <laughs> Been a while, getting some, I mean. Uh, what's the deal? You and Kelly, I think she likes you. So you're having a dress, but huh? No wonder you're so cranky all the time. Hey, watch your mouth. You're going to hurt my feelings. Shit. But nah, you're right. Okay, when I first met you, I thought you were going to get all super flirty with me. And I just wasn't into that at the time. Then you get a look at this hot bud. Oh, yeah. If I met you now, I'd be all over that. Yeah. Alas, mm. The friend zone and all that. <laughs> well, shit. <laughs> now we're getting personal. Uh, cheers. Yeah, cheers. So, there's something I wanted to ask you. Yeah. What's I'm up? kind of in disbelief that you defeated me today in volleyball. Yeah. <laughs> were you trying like really freaking hard to impress me? I know that sounds mega conceited, but screw it. Seven beers, and now it's a perfectly acceptable question. This is the one that gives me a thing, so I'm just gonna use it. <laughs> well, nothing says, hey, check me out, like spiking a ball into a girl's face. But here, let me feel. I mean, apparently you spiked it in my garage a few times, so. <laughs> you're off the couch for a minute and squeezes your bicep, then squeezes your shoulders and delts in your back. Are you ticklish? <laughs> I am very ticklish. Nice work. You'll look great. Thank you. Because, speaking of inappropriate questions... Whoa. Uh -oh. Do you want to bang Callie? Am I crazy for wondering that? Because I saw the way you kissed her, and now I'm wondering. Uh, it's been a while for me, too. My first choice is not interested. Are you sure about that? Maybe you should ask her again. Maybe your first choice is more interested than you think. Oh, one more question. Not my interest at all. Who was that blondie who got all kissy face with you? Ah. Uh, she was insanely rude. Uh, yeah, I no, had this overwhelming urge to punch her face every time I heard Sondere, her stupid voice. Sondere type. I mean, she seemed interesting. Girl, I'm saying I kind of have oh, to say that. Okay, I mean. I could tell that just from the way you two were talking. Fuck, I'm sorry, I didn't... Uh... I, guess, I just thought you two didn't look... I don't know. You don't seem to match. I'm sorry, God, I hate this. I hate this. I hate this. Why am I doing this myself? But what do I know, right? But I gotta save. I'm drunk and single and on a terrible dry spell. <laughs> hey, there's some stuff I want to tell you. Hey, you think you're cool. I'm glad we met. Even though the first time I saw you, my boobs popped out. 
Made an impression. Yeah, I bet it did. <laughs> I just want you to know. I trust you. And I want to tell you something that only people I trust know. Here we go. The reason I've been so... grouchy, I guess, is that a really painful anniversary is coming up. Uh, yikes. The end of this month, when I was little, my mom died in a really tragic way. Oh my god, I'm tearing up from that. Holy shit. I literally got like a wave. Like a wave went over me. I don't know what... Oh my god. She actually died in front of me. She drowned. I should not be getting this emotional over a fictional character. Oh my god. This is the most I've ever cried during a video. Holy shit. God. And every year, on the anniversary, I feel really checked oh. up about it still. God, I... Oh my god, I... So, if I get really weird in the next couple of weeks, it's not you. It's just me dealing with some stuff. I just don't want to drive you away is all. That means a lot to me. I worry about it. Oh you wouldn't be God. the first friend I lost because I'm so messed up about it still. Jesus Christ. All right. I'm sorry. Most important question of all time. Yeah. Can you defeat me at wrestling? <laughs> God, okay. Jeez, you can't just go right into that after that. Oh my God. God. Okay, the tears are gone now. That that hit me in the feels, man. Okay, we need we need to get the mood lightened up. Aha! Sneak attack! She pulls you to the floor and tries to lock her arms around your waist. For a moment, you're completely thrown off balance. Her legs are incredibly strong, and she managed to almost pin you into the floor. <laughs> if I pin you, you gotta do whatever I tell you. She tries her best to wrap her legs around you and pin you down, but you have finally got enough leverage to fight back. Drag her up and pick her up. You lift her into the air and your arms lock and cross her breasts. For a moment, you can only kick her legs uh, uselessly in the air. You try to sta stay standing, but her kicks shift your weight enough to two of you fall to the couch. Your shoulders beneath you for a moment, laughing and squealing in delight as she tries to regain her grip. <laughs> no, no! I got you! She struggles for a few moments more, then she looks at your face and her smile fades ever so slightly. After staring at you for a few moments, she starts to kiss you. Her whole body comes alive beneath you. She pulls you down on top of her and begins to run her hands over your chest. You feel her squeeze her pussy against you and you start to kiss her neck and she begins to breathe in a fast, desperate grasp. Oh, I want you so bad. Third time this episode. Oh, touch me, please. Kiss me. Jesus. She pulls off your shirt and you pull off hers. She immediately pulls off her shorts, feeling her full body to you. Oh, please. Make love to me. Your lips to your breast, taking a nipple into your mouth as your hand begins to rub her pussy. Oh, baby. You kiss her, touch her after a few moments. Uh, more than your slowly stand, takes your hand, leading you to the bedroom. Oh, that's a nice little bedroom. Oh, who's that frame? Is that a cat in the background? Oh, it's a dog. Still, pretty cool. Um, what else we got here? Books, trophies, soccer ball, football, a bed, dog bed, I'm assuming. Based off the dog poster. Oh, what the fuck? Where'd you get these rose petals from? With a look of vulnerable need, she slowly spreads her legs open for you. You slide between them and begin by kissing her stomach. You can feel her abs flex and roll beneath your lips as she's breathing. It grows faster. I'm gonna have to read everything here, because this is all gonna be censored for you two. You've downward from her navel, softly kissing and licking. Her body's a sea of eager strength. Her supple legs bend and thrust, hoping you'll move more quickly. Instead, you take your time, your fingers gliding delicately to her breast, and your nose swiftly tracing path down to her thigh. Her hand squeezes yours to her breast, and she's panting now. Her other slowly, her other slowly grips your head, hastening you to her ple to pleasure. You pause your lips just above her clip, breathing. Her breathing is rapid with a faint whine of anticipation. The wave crashes. Your lips close on her clitoris, and your tongue swirls. Your hands grip her thighs, pulling her to you. She holds uh, her breath, and only a few moments of real pleasure she orgasms. I don't think we need to censor that part. 
Time slows and Iro makes love to you with burning ferocious uh, need, her sweat drips down your body. Her body bends and flexes like nothing you've ever experienced, her endurance seems endless. Finally, after seemingly hours of passionate sex, Iro sighs softly and relaxes her fourth climax. Jesus. She aches her back, running her fingers through her hair, lost in ecstasy. See, sorry. It's dark by then, still a bit drunk and completely spent from sex. Iro collapses on her side and falls asleep almost instantly. You, on the other hand, have sobered up enough to make your way home. You pull a blanket on her and make sure to lock the door on your way out. Thank God. The home feels strange. Feelings you've never had before. You're not sure... You know what any of it means. Yeah, I'm... Yeah, that was a lot. Okay, let's see what this pick was, Iro. Hey, um, how's it going? So, are we a thing now? Do you like me? Was it on an accident? Because, well, I hope it was on an accident. It was amazing, and I would be lying if I admit that I wouldn't want to let it happen. I realize that I like you a lot, and I hope you like me too. So, are we yous? Yes, we're us. Are we us? Jesus Christ, I'm so dumb. Good, great, wonderful. Okay, I don't want to say without sounding like an idiot. I'm crazy excited to see you again. I'll text you next week. Looking forward to figuring this all out if you talk to you soon. Also, I thought Cassie was out of town. Let's look at this picture, and then I'll save that for next episode. We're playing guitar while naked. That's great. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one. Peace! Um.